Radio, I think we're live. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I'm here with you at a bright and early 3:48 a.m. Sunday morning in New Zealand, ready to watch the entire UFC 243 card, Khabib vs. Gaethje. Feel free to join me, sit back, and relax, and we'll go through some fights together. Um, it's going to be a nice long day, we're going to get nice and friendly, to help the day fly by. I have a nice bottle of, uh, of whiskey to keep me going. So at the end of the day, we should be feeling nice, nice and good. I'll pour myself a little glass now. And we'll wait for the fire to start. And we start going over what's going to happen. Cheers, everyone. Yeah, tasting. No, okay, we're good. So, I've set up some bits today just to make things a little more interesting. My bits coming through the day are. Uh, Justin Gaethje, Robert Whitaker, Walt Harris, uh, Lauren Murphy, I hope I say this right, Da Eun Jung by KO, Nathaniel Wood, and then I also have two other random bets for all the underdogs to win and three plus fights to win in Realm 1. Now I'm only betting $20. But if I at least get the, all the underdogs all correct, there'll be a five hundred dollar return. So should we make things interesting? Okay, let's go over this fight card because it is one of the most banging cards of the year. I think that was the last, the last um, fight card on uh, UFC Fight Island for the time being. Right, well, something at the top, you have the main event, Justin Gaethje, this is Khabib Nurmagomedov, and enough said about, me, said about this fight already, you have Khabib's undefeated champion versus Gaethje, who's on a bit of a tear on them and stole this opportunity from Tony Ferguson after their interim title fight earlier on in the year. And a beautiful, beautiful performance on his part. Showing masterclass changes in his game plan and just put a beating on Tony Ferguson. Everyone thought was 
A monster still is a monster, but is now I don't know, I think a, a couple of fights in under his belt again, he'll be right back in there. And then we have Whitaker versus Cannoneer. Uh absolute banger. Banger of a fight. Whitaker the former middleweight champion looked pretty pretty good with his fight against Darren Till. Um but Jared Cannonier I think personally is the dark horse in the division. Dark horse in the in the division. Um has come up from heavyweight. Um win over Cyril Asker at heavyweight, then down to light heavyweight with a with a win over Eon Cruz Lava. And then finally down to um to middleweight where he has I think three wins at middleweight. <coughs> Between uh, Jacko Manson and David Branch, maybe just the two, just the two wins in middleweight. David Branch and Jared, um, Jacko Manson. So looking good, looking good so far. Should be a banger of a fight. Uh, either way, the winner, I believe, is getting the next time shot at Israel Asanya. So stakes are on the line. Then heavyweight fight, which everyone loves a heavyweight fight, uh, Alexander Volkov and Walt Harris, important fight I think, Walt Harris coming off the devastating loss to Alistair Overeem, which, that was, that was a hard one, that was a hard one to watch, because there's, there's no need for us to, uh, go over it, but, um, the fact he lost his daughter in his first fight back since losing his daughter, just, it's, it's devastating and, and unfortunate circumstances, and it was, it was, it's hard to watch, but I think we, uh, passed, we're past talking about that, as I'm sure he is too, so it's good to see him back in here again, against a tough opponent, Alexander Volkov, who, Although he's not the most exciting guy in the world, is is dangerous and is sharp. Um, except when he's throwing intercepting knees against Derek Lewis in the last thirty seconds of their match. But besides that, phenomenal fighter, good jab, tall, big, no, uh, tough fight for Harris. But Harris is fast. And then we have Malcoon versus Hawes. Both here UFC debut. Hawes off the contender series don't know much about them but it should be fun Hawes looks like it turns out a Henry, Henry Hooft so it should be a good fight uh, Lauren Murf Murphy versus a short notice opponent in uh, I don't know her name Ilya Shakarova who until this fight on like less than a week's notice. So good on her, but Laura Murphy been around for a while. Been around for a long while. So high hopes for her. And then finally on the main card. Obscure choice in in matchmaking, but understand why is the rematch between um, Magomed and Kalayev and Ion Kutalaba after the odd, odd first fight when um, Ankalayev hit <laughs> Kutalaba with one good strike and Kutalaba played possum and fell into the trap and was playing possum who played himself the ref stopped it because he thought he was actually hurt but really he was just playing possum so then this fight's been scheduled like three times since then but Ion Kutalaba I think tested positive for coronavirus twice and then also got injured or something I'm not sure but I think it's the third time 
and this fight's been scheduled since the original matchup, so I'm good to get out of the way. And so my card, other fights are noteworthy, actually the undercard does, does look pretty good too. Um, Struve to Tuivasa, interesting fight, uh, matchup of styles, is, you know, Tuivasa is just like a big mark hunt, a bigger mark hunt. And Seven Struve, the biggest man in the world who can't use a jab. Uh, so, it should be interesting. Nathaniel Wood vs Casey Kenny, fun fight, a very fun fight, Nathaniel Wood, that English prospect who, he's looked good at all of his fights, gets into a brawl frequently, but then lost by knockout of John Dodson, but has since, has since come back and won one since then, but, oh, well, there's a level set I guess, but John Dodson, the side throwing arm punches, in his career, so I guess it was good for him to get back on track with a knockout finish. Although Alex Oliveira is back, most inconsistent fighter in a welterweight, but fun, fun nonetheless. And Jung versus Alvi. Alvi. I like Alvi. But, a tough fight for him, I think. Looking at doing a little bit of research on this guy. This guy looks good. This guy looks good. So, I'm going to butcher his name a thousand times, but, Ta Unjung, good fighter, and the early prelims, don't know much about them, but, um, Alvarez, Guillotine Joe Duffy in his last fight, his retirement fight, which was all very sad, because Joe Duffy has such high potential, but, I'm so looking forward to seeing him, so, should be a good card, looking forward to it. Thank you for joining me on this first ever edition of uh, Alternative Commentary Track for the UFC Tougher 4, if you're sick of hearing to the original guys. So, we're in it. We'll devolve as the day goes on, and I drink more whiskey. But until then, I'll try to keep it semi-coherent. But yeah. Oh, you'll hear from me soon once the first, start, the first fight starts. So we're here, we'll talk about um, some news that actually happened this week, <laughs> which everyone seems to love, is the announcement of the main event between uh, Leon Edwards and um, Ka uh, Kamzat, K uh, Kamzat Chemaev, immediately after Leon Edwards was removed from the rankings for inactivity, which was just bizarre, considering people like Conor McGregor have been in the, uh, in the rankings for the entire year without fighting the entire year. Actually, when was the end? It was the last fight. Last fight would have been against Dos Anos, I think. Actually, no, fuck it. He did fight ages ago. July 29th, 2019. Over a year ago. Yes, he hasn't fought in a while. Either way, 
Um, we can't remember the rankings, which everyone was surprised about, so... Can't remember them, and immediately... Fight was announced. He's fighting comes up to my who's on a tier. So, a little bit of, uh, I guess, pressure from the UFC to get him to fight. As much as we like Leon Edwards, which we don't really, he is pretty boring and he's been calling for a lot, so it's actually, actually good to see him get a fight. So, exciting stuff here. <coughs> Oh man, this is what he's going to have. I might just fell off. Yakovlev, yeah, that's right, wasn't that? So Yakovlev 
has been UFC for a long time. I don't remember him at all, but has fought Lights of Kamara, Usman, Daniel Mai, and Zach Cumming. So, I mean, he's been in there with a who's who of people. And this man Alvarez, a lot of eyes on him, especially after his guillotine finish with Joe Duffy, who's very tough. So, interested. Interesting, interesting, interesting. To see how this goes for him. <coughs> what weight is this? 155, obviously 155. So, Yakovlev, um, for more else weight. So, we'll see how the uh, size looks compared to one another. Uh, 15 submissions, 100% finish rate for this man, Alvarez. So, no joke on the ground. Interesting to see how this one goes. Plan for a bit of um, three plus first round finishes. Hope so. Make some money today. Similar in size between the two. There was massive side discrepancy that I, that I might have thought, considering um, the yeah, Akali coming down from well to late. Jason Herzog, absolute lad as a referee. Pretty good referee. One of the better ones these days, I think. A lot of referees make mistakes. It's good to see one making good. Both these fighters, six foot three. That's why they look so similar in height because they're both massive. Alvarez though didn't miss weight. Was unaware of that until right now. One fifty nine point five. That is huge, huge discrepancy in weight. So unfortunate there, but we'll see how it performs. Bruce Buffett is going to be able to If we can, if you're watching this at home, you can line them up. You can line them up nicely with one, with, we can line them up nicely with each other. Okay, beginning of the first round. I don't know the round, okay, beginning of round in three, two, one, opening round. Touch your gloves. Both have them on the center of the cage, giving each other looks. Back and forth feints from both fighters. Hands high from Alvarez. We're going to uh, Alvarez coming out in the orthodox stance while Yakovlev standing south for a little low kick from Yakovlev just miss his Alvarez legs. Serve each other though, a high kick from Alvarez blocked by Yakovlev, low kick followed up by Alvarez. Nice feint. Lead hook, wide hook, just miss from Alvarez. Feints in and out by feinting at the same time. Both fighters biting of each other's feints. Hands quite stiff for Yakovlev, pumping out a loose, soft jab, low kick again from Alvarez, hands down as an outside low kick. Takedown from Yakovlev, straight on the neck as Alvarez pulls arm and guillotine, one hook in, he's got it tight, Yakovlev waiting, it's tight, it looks tight, he's squeezing, Alvarez is squeezing, Yakovlev, it's almost past the bottom leg, one leg over the back, it looks tight. Yeah, kind of calm. Waiting it out, but Alvarez is squeezing. He might be out. He's not moving. No, he's still in there. He's still in there. Waiting, 
Arms coming in, higher leg position for Alvarez. Over his mid back in that half guard squeeze. Listen for squeeze at the moment. Yeah, he was controlling that bottom leg. Sits over though, both legs in. Wrapped the full guard with this guillotine. He's going to slip out though. Yeah, his head slips out. And the full guard of Alvarez. Beautiful guillotine. Almost finished. Let's see how his arms feel after that squeeze. Elbows from bottom from Alvarez. He can just stay low on his body, landing on his short body strikes. Head staying down, posturing as his own head. Left hand guard of the head so he lands upon his his right hand, now breast up a triangle, he let go of that really quickly. Grabs arm again, hips out for an armbar again, but unable to get his legs high enough. Short the rabbit punches from it. Yeah, from the top armbar again, opposite arm. He's got he's locked he's locked it up. It is in. Nice squeeze. It's fully extended. You might get this now. It's fully extended. Arm is extended. It was posturing up. It looks tight. Looks like about to see sits back on his butt. Alvarez is pulling tight. The elbow is still in the armbar. It looks like he's about to slip out. He was on his back again. He got it. He got it. Alvarez first round submission. Armbar from the guard. Well done. Beautiful submission. Alvarez, dangerous from bottom. Dangerous from bottom. Fights at the arm and guillotine immediately. Looks tight. But Yekon survives well. And then I think th three armbars from guard. He's eventually switching to the outside, to the opposite side armbar. And uh, wraps it up nicely. Rolls over to get a more traditional armbar position. And, um, very nice watching the replay here. Unlooks it nicely, gets his hips up very nice. Shoots that uh, the leg over the head and pulls up the armbar nicely. Looks locked out while Jakob Lee is stacking Alvarez. Jakob sits back onto his back. The armbar almost like it slipped out, but no. Beautiful armbar. Very nice submission from Alvarez. Well, on that, that's a good start. Let's start with the fights. Well done for Alvarez. First off, for the run time bets. We'll probably make some money. Hang on. I'll look really quickly and see what my uh, payout is for that fight. Uh, I hope I've put it in. Come on, I'm a little annoyed. Oh, oh I need to put it in. That's, that's a bit annoying. Okay. No, I'm a little bit annoyed about that. Okay. Um, every betting every outside I win to put a dollar in there with a five dollar return. Not like that, that'd be funny. Three fight ends in round one, I put two dollars in there because I'm pretty confident with that one there. I thought place bets. I don't know why I thought I did that last time, but I didn't. I didn't know about that, but that's okay. to Yuro with uh, Joy Anik now for Alvarez. Um, good, good year between two submission finishes within a couple of months of each other. The, the Joe Tuffy fight wasn't that long ago. So, we'll see if he can get one win this year. If he does. Apologies, it's still only 4 like 4.30 in the morning. Um, 
Et catchy par ma heal, je t'ai demandé. Chase the first finish. And so next fight was well, another woman's fight. Juma versus Maverick. I don't know anything about these girls, so should be an interesting fight. I don't think it will fall into my prediction of um, the three plus fights going into going into um, first round finish. That's okay. Oh, watch out for the standard ant break you see we have. Because you're paying for this and we'll have ants consistently throughout it, but that's okay. Stuff, but it's okay, there's only one of you, so I'm not too stressed about it. I guess, I, I guess I'm talking about the, the main event and the source of the main event. So, just in case you've got a career resurgence after his two back to back losses between Dustin Poirier and Eddie Alvarez, changed his style not completely but had a more measured approach. Dustin, uh, his only fight against Michael Johnson, came forward 8 2 noteworthy shots that rocked him. Michael Johnson unable to finish out. Um, Gagey comes back and looks good and puts him into the cage and ties him out and finishes him with a variety of punches and uh, leg kicks where he really can stand his foot start from just a wee lead upper, uh, uppercut from him. But then after that had his fight against Alvarez where Alvarez used his body shots and needs the body very well throughout the fight and Gagey got tired and finished mid third round <sighs> coming off that loss he he went a main event spot against Dustin Poirier in a uh, wonderful uh, fight where he landed good low kicks and um, powerful punches but was getting caught off the low kicks and was just covering up as Dustin Poirier came forward and threw uh, big strikes throughout the fight. So eventually, he got up to I think the fourth round off a low kick, and uh, was unable to bring the fight to a situation where he could recover. You did see him try to tie up just before the finish, but was uh, he could not wrap him up in a way that would stop Dustin Poirier unloading against him. So Dustin Poirier late finish. I think that was Dustin Poirier's last fight before his interim title, uh, title fight against uh, Max Holloway. And then after that, just to get you take some time off, uh, I want to say almost rediscovers his self and his style, changes it a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit. And his uh, comeback fight, comeback fight, his next fight against uh, James Vick was uh, looking looking tough because James Vick was on a bit of a roll, I believe. I think 10 fights in a row, or at least 10 wins in the UFC. Only lost going to Benil Dariush. So James Vick was on a bit of a rise. But uh, Justin Gaethje changed his style, way more measured approach. Steps forward nice, a little bit of head movement, and uh, clips James Vick. A, a right hook as uh, James Vick circles out to his right, the right the way he should be circling out. Hits him perfectly, lights out, just like that. So, not much you can say about that fight, he just had, had a good performance and looked good. Then fights Edson Barboza, tough fight. Uh, Edson Barboza known for his inability to handle good pressure. So, a favourable matchup 
foot just engaged. If it just engaged, it comes out as measured. It doesn't necessarily rush forward. Tries a few low kicks, which actually gets Barboza um, backing up. And then uh, Barboza does he normally does the circles off the cage as he, when he's pushed there by Gaethje but circles very wide with his hands down and he has to actually catch them with a right hook as he's circling away run right on the chin uh, beautiful uh, beautiful knockout from him again uh, then Donald Cerrone Donald Cerrone again has a uh, very noticeable uh, problem with pressure fighters but Donald Cerrone does well against people who rush in so old Justin Gaethje pre losses to Alvarez and Poya Gaethje I feel like would have struggled with Cerrone as he would come forward Cerrone would have had him with intercepting knees but Gaethje measured approach came in softly and uh, waited for Cowboy Cerrone to come to him at the same time and uh, I noticed that watching the fight Cowboy was coming in throwing his uh, awkward straight hooks when he was hanging out too long in the pocket afterwards Cow comes in uh, hangs out too long, gets clipped, oh, the right hook, no, left hook, I think this time, and he hangs out in the pocket too long, uh, awkward stoppage, as Kelly went down, and the ref refused to stop it, and Gaethje to land, excuse me, a few more unnecessary punches, so, good performance again, not a fight that he needed to take, I don't think, but glad he did, he looked good, and then finally the one, is his real test, real test was the interim title fight against the monster that was Tony Ferguson who in all fairness shouldn't have taken that fight he should have sat on what he had and uh, fought Khabib now instead but I'm glad he did it shows what kind of fighter Tony is um, so from a business standpoint uh, terrible decision but from a fan's point of view uh, beautiful work Bit of work from Tony, but did not did not work out in his favour. Um, Tony did us to get you measured measured the entire fight. Never rushed in. Uh, made a good shots, good power shots. It made Tony flinch on and uh, curl back on like almost every single every single one of them. Um, it appeared it appeared to be that. I think it was slowing down at the end of the first and the second, but he kind of hit that hit the wall of of, of um, tightness, but never went past it. He got he looked like he slowed down a little bit going into the third round, and then just coasted at that same pace the entire time. So very good on his part there. Um, beautiful uppercut from Tony Ferguson at the end of the second round. Rocks just engaging. He's coming in with his own uppercut um, and drops him. I personally thought it turned important in the fight. Tony Ferguson is going to start picking it up, but no. Justin Gaethje recovers well. Uh, and in the third, fourth, and fifth, I believe, the finishes, he, um, puts, he puts a nice, a measured pressure fight and lands good shots until Tony Ferguson can't take any more than the rest of so A beautiful stoppage. Showed how dangerous Gaethje can be, especially in a fight like this. If he's measured and pushes Khabib back, because Khabib find not not, not honestly, I don't say issues, but he has less success shooting in for takedowns coming when his back's on the fence as opposed to when he forces the opponent's back on the fence. You see his whole game is to force the opponent to defend and shoot on there. And it's not whether or not you can defend the takedown the first time, it's whether you can defend the takedown the second or the third or the fourth time. Because he gets you on the cage and he shoots a takedown and it's just constant, it's constantly uh, grinding you down, getting you back up, grinding you back down, getting you back up. Very uh, smothering style, Dustin Paul, you have found that out when you even heard him say between uh, round two and round three that uh, uh, he's, uh, I can't get him off me, that's what he said. <coughs> and and you saw, you saw um, Dustin Paul, you have moments of success on the feet, uh, I think in the second round, he uh, clips Khabib coming in with like an overhand right and pushes him back, lands some good punches. Khabib looked awkward and um, not comfortable going backwards while getting uh, strikes thrown at him like that. But then as soon as uh, Dustin Poirier uh, 
ran out of energy for that little burst, can be turned around back to the fiends and then back into his world, took him down, dragged him down, every time does employ got back up, dragged him down again. And the boy had a few good moments of uh, some quite nice um, we uh, had some hat switches from the uh, Kirby Pellet like, taking him down, but Dustin Boy was still sitting kind of on his butt and would uh, reach in front of Khabib and between his legs with his, let's say, his right arm, he would go on the uh, r right side of Khabib and into his arms between the legs and actually lift Khabib up with his one hand and it had some nice switches. I thought it was quite impressive, especially from a man who's not known as, as a defensive wrestler. But Khabib was uh, too savvy and managed to just stay on his back the entire time and uh, tire him out until he sunk in an extremely tight rear naked choke and uh, doesn't pull your attempt quite quickly. So, but prior to that, Khabib's matches have been the same. I think, uh, I think technically, now, Technically, um, Conor McGregor I think is the only person to win a round in some of the UFC, but we've all seen the Gleason TBR fight and we all have our own opinions about it. We, I think we can all collectively agree that uh, Conor McGregor was not the first person in the UFC to win a round against him, but uh, officially he is. And people would like to give Conor McGregor credit for what he did against Khabib, which uh, wasn't a lot, but he had a good third round. A good third round, um, and that kind of showed the... not flaws, but the... Um, specific circumstances for Khabib to do well um, when Conor McGregor was coming going forward and landing strikes against Khabib uh, it was, Khabib was never in danger but it was in a more uh, Conor McGregor centric world when Khabib was going forward he was putting Conor McGregor, Conor McGregor against the fence and taking him down when Conor McGregor was in the centre of the cage Khabib had more issues and taking him down he was unable to do it in the first round the first shot of the match Conor McGregor had um, great take on defence actually was um but good but then as soon as uh his uh, in the center of the cage he had a nice was like grabbing behind could be even reaching and behind his thigh and spinning with him and keeping like a relative, relatively good control unable uh not letting Khabib to put his butt on the mat but then as soon as uh Khabib was pushing Conor back in a, back in a more uh, linear line uh, he managed to um sink him down and uh, grab the arm and pull him all the way to the mat and then was pushed into the to the cage and was controlling from there. But Khabib trying uh, shooting in loosely from the edge of the cage, more towards the center of the cage where Conor McGregor was. He was having final success. Conor McGregor was uh, pulling him up into uh, clinch positions and up uh, breaking away uh, quite easily. And I can't remember. I don't think he got a takedown in the end of the third round. I'm not sure, but either way, it was a round for Conor McGregor. And uh, then the fourth round happened, and Khabib got into the cage once again, his whole gang into the cage, and uh, lifts him up, takes him down, Conor McGregor gives his back, and a very nasty neck crank from Conor McGregor. Um, the key thing, I think, is in previous Khabib matches, is the wall walk, which is a very prominent defense to can take it out of the cage. Khabib's whole game is based on you wall walking and him dragging you back down. Constant, constant, um, constant, constant, constantly. It is, it is what it is, over and over and over and over and over again. And that's what gets people tired. So, we haven't seen Justin Gaethje fight off his back. We haven't seen him defend too many takedowns. The only ones that um, I can recall, in the UFC at least, have been uh, Michael Johnson uh, uh, panic shooting on him when he was extremely tired and not getting anywhere from it. But then Dustin Poirier and uh, Justin Gaethje both like touched his legs and uh, and uh, uh, took him down, but not in the sense that they controlled him. Took him down and Gaethje immediately exploded back to the feet. There was a uh, uh, and he looked tired after it. But there was talk of um, Justin Gaethje being an amazing wrestler, but um, just doesn't choose to use it. So it will be interesting to see how he uses it because. Uh, no one outside of Gleason Tebow has been really been able to stop Khabib taking him down but people can stand back up Abel Trujillo who was not known as a major wrestler got up 29 times or something but it all depends on how much energy Justin Gaethje expends 
getting back up. That is where that is that is the difference. And, and this is this is what this fight is going to mean. We all know what's what's going to happen. Kaiba is going to take Keiichi out. Keiichi is probably going to stand back up. How many times can he do it? How many times can he get back up? How many times can he force Khabib to reshoot? How many times can he force Khabib to fail? That is the question. That is the question. Because you know, you do know some things. I think, I think importantly will be the opening, opening second of the match or whether or not Dustin Gaethje comes forward or circles the cage allowing Khabib to pressure forward. If he is smart, he will be pressuring Khabib back so Khabib has a shoot towards the center of the cage. I, I, I think at this point in Khabib's career, we're at the stage where uh, <laughs> this girl's hair size got stuck in here, trying to pull it out. Um, this girl, um, we're at the stage in his career where uh, people are afraid, not afraid. People shell up from the fear of the takedown, similarly to the effect uh, John Jones has on opponents. The most noble one of John Jones recently, Anthony Smith. Although Anthony Smith doesn't every fight, he shells up until eventually coming on strong later on. But it's the the uh, I've seen proved the same thing against John Jones. It is the the idea of fighting the entity that is John Jones that has caused you not to be the fighter you normally are. We'll see if Justin Gaethje has the same the same um, the same problem. But we'll come back to that. We will come. We will come back to that fight after this one here. This fight here between Jojua, who's from Georgia, and uh, Maverick. Showing highlights here. Maverick, uh, a bit of a tank of a woman. Actually, wide shoulders, big arms, looks incredibly strong, and uh, I believe it was her fighting over Victor. Uh, good submissions. Armbar, or a naked choke. She looks strong. Looks strong. Uh, a little bit shorter Maverick is, but has a um, three and a half inch reach advantage. The high difference is not really worth noting there's only half an inch in it. <coughs> oh, that whiskey is uh, not pleasant. <coughs> big, big favorite Maverick is minus 420. So, and it is the actual the UFC, i.e. I believe UFC debut for Maverick. I didn't run anything because I did not care because I did not know these people. Nojoa looks um, calm, almost too calm. See if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Yeah, correct. Jojoa. Also, no, um, no small one either. He has a nice, nice strong arms. Strong arms, Jesus Christ. He has bigger arms. And, um, I'm just to see how this one goes. Okay, touch of gloves. Uh, open starts here. Um, Jojua, Orthodox, Maverick. Maverick, South Fork. Come on forward. Powerful jab from Jojua to start the match off. Maverick. Arm punching, the deflation. Jojo are leaning in with these uh, strengths, looking good so far. Um, pairing the right hand from Jojo. Pumping out short feints. Maverick. Pumping out lead kick, countered from a straight hand by Jojo. Lead check hook from Maverick, just on the guard. Soft punch. Height and listen to knee, but it's a 1 2 for, for fainting that kick there. Um, Maverick does. Side kick from Maverick. Lands. Oh, Jojoa lands a, another straight hook as Maverick comes in with the lead hook. Um, Jojoa striking looks sharp. It's another jab there Maverick does coming in. Not moving her head as she's coming in with these strikes. Straight hand, uh, straight from a uh, nice lead kick from Maverick. Countered by Jojoa, doesn't quite land. Straight again from Jojoa, run on the chin. She's throwing these uh, straight um, right hands with power. Body kick. From Maverick. Nice. 
a lot of noise from nerve breaks coming in. Ushing, ushing on every single punch. Oh, oh, nice combination from Maverick there, ending with a lead kick, a uh, uh, one, uh, one four, and then a lead kick. Combination again, Joshua backing up after any these punches now. There's definitely a, a power uh, advantage on the side of Maverick. But Joshua landing good punches, but is uh, seemed to already sort of, all powerful lead kick from Maverick there as Joshua throws another straight. Again, the one thing is one, one twos down the middle, uh, landing early, Maverick has since adjusted, and uh, not landing as cleanly now. A little flurry from Maverick ended there with a uh, side kick. As soon as the timing, Superman punch misses, but ends a uh, ends that combination with a jab on the nose. Uh, Joshua already bleeding out the nose. Nose quite red from the combinations of Maverick already. Joshua already uh, not uh, is, is flinching on these punches and not throwing as much. Another one two from her though lands another body kick from Maverick. Beautiful route there. Um, uh, open side body kick there. Fainting to down lead elbow from Maverick, lands upward elbow, Jojoa backing up now, eats a straight from Maverick as she comes in, circling around, Jojoa circles her to the cage, does a one-two with a head down, but uh, Maverick pushes it back to the centre of the cage a little bit, Maverick, uh, Jojoa doing a nice circling around the cage, back in the centre they are now, another another open side body kick and as a foot lands, and a straight as well, circling as a one-two, no, oh, head kick that time, blocked from Jojoa, follow by a leg kick, Combination there ending with a leg kick. Uh, Joshua throws a one two again. Middle doesn't quite land. Joshua uh, nose root and body at this point currently. Superman punch again ending with a jab. Combination from both women lands uh, one two from Joshua again. Seems to be the only combination she's throwing is that one two down the middle. Head down lands in body straight and then lead hook there. Another body straight again doesn't quite land. Nice knee from Maverick but eats an overhand right as she lands. Maverick coming in, body kick again. Joshua is uh, bleeding quite a little bit out of that nose. Body straight for Maverick. Joshua breathing quite heavily. Uh, slow lead hook there. It seems like every time Maverick is coming in, uh, Joshua is only throwing back a 1 2, which is allowing Maverick to get a timing on it. Once again, 1 2, she comes in. Maverick is getting a timing on it and avoiding these punches now. Singular jab from Joshua. Lead elbow again as she comes in. Joshua throws a jab, doesn't doesn't land that at all. <coughs> Joshua circles for head kick again, and she lands just a jab with a one. Joshua eat it, eats it, comes forward though. Seems to be kind of the cage a little better now. Side kick from Maverick. Joshua comes in, a little more aggression on her now. Throws a one-two again, does not land. Body straight from Zerick, Maverick, eat the lead body kick. Uh, sorry, um, from Maverick to Joshua. Um, Maverick on the cage now, but it lands combinations coming in. Joshua seems to eat them. Not a lot of. Oh, beautiful. Bust her nose up. Nose is bleeding quite heavily now. Elbow again from Maverick. 20 seconds left in the round. Psychic again. Joshua's getting uh, pieced up here. She's coming and spits blood all over here. Oh, a lot of blood. She's bleeding heavily. Straight and body kick lands from Maverick. Joshua looking a little worse for wear coming into this round. 10 seconds left. Body kick again from Maverick. Maverick looks good. Still looks fresh. One two from Joshua misses. Nowhere near the target. Another lead uh, back body kick. Uh, end of the first round. Joshua looks badly busted up and does not have a significant answer for Maverick's crisp box and coming in. The one twos are not being enough. Beautiful round. 10 9 to Maverick. Nasty cut on the nose of, uh, of Joshua while also bleeding out of her nose. <coughs> there was an, I think it was the uppercut, kind of like a corkscrew uppercut that landed for um, Maverick um, that caused the cut bleeding quite profusely. Nothing. Wow. Wow, the doctor calls a stop to the end of the first round for that cut on the bridge of the nose of Jojua. Wow, Maverick, beautiful you've said debut, had, was looking sharp, was looking sharp, was struggling with the one-twos in the opening minute or so, but quickly found her range and her timing and her movement, 
And let's see, I thought it was an uppercut, but let's just have another look here. No, was it up lead? It was the back. Sorry, it was the power arm lead uppercut. More lands with the forearm. Straight on the nose causes that cut. I thought it was a scorch wrap because she brings it on forward. Oh, beautiful work from Maverick. Beautiful, beautiful work from Maverick. I'm, I'm apologizing now because I don't know her full name. I was calling her Maverick. Um, what is her name? Uh, Amanda, Amanda Maverick. I apologize. Amanda Maverick. Yeah, no, uh, beautiful performance. I, I'm excited to see her fight again. Uh, was aggressive. The, the, the common uh, critique on uh, women MMA fights is the lack of aggression and pushing forward and just throwing uh, rather weak punches with not a lot of um, force behind them. But uh, she looked like she was throwing strong, strong, um, a strong, um, strong, strong, strong fighter. Oh, good one. Well done. Um, which I'm giving the uh, interview now. I'll see what she says, and I'll relate anything important. Good, well-spoken woman. Uh, I, I have high, I have uh, high expectations. High expectations. Like I'm like gonna be disappointed that she doesn't do well. No, she looked, she looked good. She looked good. I say now she hasn't had to use a strike much before. She doesn't need to because her grappling's been so good. But no, she looked good. She looked good. The lead, the lead. I keep saying lead uppercut. You know, back uppercut. It was upward. Her back upward upper. Oh, fuck me. Her back upward elbow was very nice. Very, very nice, perfectly timed. That is because Shojua was not moving her head at all and was just throwing one twos. Also, she's starting to get a PhD or something, so this is even more impressive. <coughs> Fear the Maverick. Miranda, not Amanda, sorry. Miranda Maverick. What's, what's uh, next for Miranda Maverick? Well, that 125 is wide open. Let's have a look at the topology. Uh, the topology um, rankings for women's flylight. Because a lot of good matches for her. Um, Jesus Christ, I've never been on I've never been on this before, so I don't actually know how to use technology. Okay. If we get out of the top fifteen, Molly McMahon will be fun. It'd be a good fight. Molly McMahon would be good. Uh, Anna Lipsky. Mm, maybe not. Ah, uh, Courtney Casey. You know what? I'd like to see that. I'd like to see Courtney Casey versus uh, Miranda Maverick. That'd be a good fight. 
JJ Aldridge. Yeah, no, I like JJ Aldridge, that'd be a good fight. Always fight as good. Actually, I don't even know if she still fights anymore. Uh, Amanda Heapers, no, she's way better than that. Pearl Gonzalez, should be fun. There's options, there's a lot of options. <laughs> Page Man's no, she's doing very good boxing now. I'm a, yeah, no, I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna say, uh, Courtney Casey would be a good fight for her to call out, or JJ Aldridge, or if she really wants to put herself up there, she. Jillian Roberts. No, who did Mickey do in just so much? Who, who did Mickey do in just so that that long ago? What is Random Marcos? Who's Random Marcos? She could call Random Marcos and that would probably could happen. <gasps> no, that's a straw. What the fuck am I talking about? That's a straw weight. I'm looking at flying weight. No, yeah, I'll take, yeah. One of the men, JJ Aldridge. Mm. What did I say? One of the men, JJ Aldridge. Courtney Casey. I like that. Fucking, what am I talking about? Courtney Casey's got a fight against Priscilla Kitchwearer, so not Courtney Casey. JJ Aldridge, call her out. On these, Miranda Maverick. Yeah, JJ Aldridge, Rank 39, Miranda Maverick, Rank 32. That's a fight to make. I like that. I like that fight. Now we will talk a little bit about the main event. I guess we'll talk more about the co-main event. And uh, I think, at least personally, the big question coming in today for um, Roll Whitaker versus Jerry Cannonier is as much the power of Cannonier. Because Roll Whitaker, good chin, uh, he gets hit. He gets hit. And when he gets hit, he gets hurt. Um, Yoa Romero took years of his life in those two fights. Um, and you saw there with Adesanya how easy he put him down. Adesanya hurt Will Whitaker. Uh, I guess, I'm uh, not Gaslam, um, Darren Till hurt Will Whitaker. My concern going into that fight was the same exact concern going into this one is, is the is the power of um, is it the, see if see if Rob Whitaker could handle the the power from Darren Till and uh, Darren Till with the lead elbow and the only ran and dropped him and I thought that was going to be the end but Rob Whitaker recovered so. We're just going to see how he handles Jared Kennedy's power. But Jared Kennedy, in my personal opinion, is the dark horse of the division. And uh, I think... Uh, I think could cause, uh, cause a lot of people problems. Jack and Manson, that, uh, that he fought, it was a, a tough, tough fight. And... And he handled it brilliantly. He's almost flawless, taken on defence, and um, hit him with a beautiful uppercut, and showed showed everyone that he is he is legit. He is very very legit. And, so, and you saw it again against David Brunch. David Brunch, strong strong wrestler. His whole game was wrestling, and the uh, Jared Cannonier uh, kept it on his feet. And hit him with a uh, beautiful straight in the second round and uh, put him down. So, Jerry Cannonier, strong wrestler, has good power and gives everyone problems in the division. Whitaker, I think, it qualified for the Commonwealth yeah, Oceania Champs or Commonwealth Games for wrestling for the Australian team. So, Whitaker, no slouch when it comes to wrestling offensively. We've seen him beautifully wrestle. Uh, defensively against Romero and uh, Jacare. Jacare was, I think, his prime performance. He looked phenomenal in that fight, uh, un unbeatable in that fight, really. And so I, I think Whitaker mixing in this some offensive wrestling would actually do him, do him really, really well. 
uh, as long as he uses it as a as a as a uh, to correlate or to uh, to complement rather his striking. Whitaker, beautiful striking, quick bursts in and out. Uh, a beautiful, beautiful lead left hook that he comes um, comes on with off the uh, front snap kick, which does quite well. Uh, I think Jared Cannonier's, um main l losses that I can think of her was I think Glover to Shearer, I believe it was, and uh, Dominic Reyes. Uh, Dominic Reyes hit him with an uppercut and put him down, and I think Glover to Shearer. Uh, just held him down for three rounds. Oh, sorry, Joker didn't beat Anderson Silva, but I don't really care about that. Debranched. Dominic Reyes knocked him out in the first round. Was it Glover to Shearer? Jan Blachowicz, sorry. Jan Blachowicz held him down for three rounds. So, but he's a much, much bigger man. So, uh, it'd be interesting to see if Whitaker hold him down. I don't think he'd be able to hold him down, but I think his uh, wrestling to uh, get him thinking about it Lead very nicely to the strikes from Whitaker. Um, yes, uh, Jerry Kenny has been caught, or Whitaker has been caught. Their yeah, chins are both good, um, but they can be hit. Uh, I hope, as a, uh, as a as a resident of New Zealand, I hope Robert Whitaker wins, but I uh, <laughs> I am not the most confident. Because I like, I like Jerry Kennedy, especially that really cool moment in uh, not his last fight, as fighting against David Branch, where uh, getting ready to walk out into the ring, uh, some like ten-year-old kid was just like hyping him up, coming out. He's like, "You got this, man. No one can stop you. You're the man. You, if you put your your head in the right headspace, uh, you can be anyone in the world." And Jerry Kennedy was like, "Yeah, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, I can." And gave the kid his shirt, and I was like, "That's." That's dope. That's some that's some dope ass shit right there. And get planted. Joe Kennedy, absolute lad. Like it. Absolute lad. Robert Kiff, absolute lad. Top 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 guy. Top 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 man. Top man. <coughs> oh that whiskey is uh <coughs> some juice with it. Ah. Well, two finishes in the first two fights, we're now stuck with the problem that there's lots of ads I don't fuck about. Oh, I think another thing that's worth note, um, coming up uh, in the near future, uh, news-wise, UFC news-wise, is, um, Marlon Marais is fighting again after his already against Rob Font. Actually, I'll look up quickly where when that fight is taking place because he lost two weeks ago. I think it's called Corey Sandhagen, who looked fantastic against him really, and uh, with a beautiful spinning wheel kick and uh, took him out. So, Marmorize versus Rob Font, UFC December nineteenth. Oh, so he's still another month away, but a very quick turnaround. Personally, don't think it is the smartest decision, especially a man as uh, dangerous as Rob Font. Rob Font, I think, uh, uh, most notably uh, won against. Um, let me just check this. Against uh, Thomas Almeida. So a dangerous, dangerous man, Rob Font. Uh, tough fight from the rise. I I personally have him winning it, but. Um, <sighs> what's trying to help? I'm not bloody sure. I'll have a look. Areas. Um. Uh, yeah, I say. I think I've, I've stylistically, I have Marias winning this fight, but the short turnaround uh, causes me concern. I don't like the short turnaround. I don't like the trauma he's taken to the head uh, between this fight and and the Aldo fight and the um Hiruzo Hudo fight he took a lot of punches in all three of those fights I don't like how quick he's turning around against this loss I thought Rob Font can hurt him Rob Font has 
<laughs> has a decent uh, looking for those flights now. The wins he has are against good opponents, and the losses he has are against better opponents. He has beaten Ricky Simone, Sergio Penis, Thomas Almeida, Douglas Silva, DeAndre, Matt, and Matt Schnell. Good, good opponents. His losses are to John Lineker, Pedro Munoz, and Rafael Sonsal. All very okay losses. John Lineker, Power Puncher, not many people can beat him. Can beat him. People only, only people beat him are guys in the top top of the division. TJ Dillashaw, uh, Corey Sandhagen. Um, I think he beat John. I think John Lineker beat John Dodson. So like top top guys. Uh, Pedro Mu uh, Munoz. Amazing fighter. When he's knocked out Cody Garbrandt, amazing fighter. Excuse me, it's still only five in the morning. Um, recent loss up to Frankie Eagles. So Pedro Munoz definitely top of the pile and uh half hour sounds now. Um and he spoils everyone's fun. Who um, whatever he whatever he does he just can't get a title shot. because yeah, you know, he said he lost um Jitter Shaw, Corey Sandhag and now Cody Garbrandt. So, it's tough, tough losses, but all like all understandable. All these guys are um, top level guys, but then beating Sergio Pettis, Thomas Almeida, and Ricky Simone are uh, very nice wins. Very, very strong wins. And uh, this fight will uh, promote him to a very high position in the division. If I were Marlon Lomelis, this is the idea that I'd be doing. I'd get that lower ranked guy who I feel like I could beat to kind of get some more names on my record and make people remember that I am a bad motherfucker because the wins Mar Marias has have been phenomenal. We beat Algerine Sterling, who's now fighting for the belt. Um, he's beaten uh, Jimmy Rivera. He's been half hour since Oh, sorry, he's been half hour since our two. So Marlon Marias, no joke, it's just a turnaround. I don't like the short. Turn around. Oh, I'll just see what happens. And we are still in ads. Yeah, clearly was running through these, um, I think it was running through these prelims really quickly again. Alex Oliveira, fun, like Alex Oliveira. Sam Alvey versus Daun. Daun looks sharp. Sam Alvey looks slow. Uh, Nathaniel Wood versus Casey Kenny. I like this fight. I like Nathaniel Wood. He's fun. Casey Kenny also fun. Casey Kenny beat Louis Smoker, who is also fun. So fun, fun fights. And then um, I think the headliner for it is Strew versus Tui, Tui Vas, I believe. Let me just check that real quick. Yes, Strew versus Tui Vasa. Um, I don't know. I, I'm 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 a tall man, so I'm a sucker for Stephen Strew because I'm on the tall man team. And Batui Vasa is a native of Australasia, just like myself. So, tough to put um, more money on someone. Uh, they both need a win. They both need a good win. And unfortunately, I think we're almost at a stage where if Batui Vasa loses, he gets cut. Because he had that last fight against Spivak, Spivak? It was a gimme fight. They threw Spivak to him. to two of us could eat him alive. And he fucking lost. And it was incredibly disappointing. But as I say, I think because of the three losses in two of us's last three, um, he loses this. He might get cut. Struve loses this. He might retire. So it's a it's it's a it's a rough one. It is a uh, rough one for all people involved. So hopefully it goes to a uh, a at least a an outcome that is favourable for someone. It'd be nice. It'd be nice. But I want to see them. I don't want to see them go away. I think Strube has so much potential. Even still, even after so many years, even after um, all the losses he's had, his very very obvious flaws. So look at his record real quick. Even his obvious flaws that he has, I still, I still believe he can do quite well.
to us for, you know, loss, win, loss, loss, loss. Win, win, loss, win, loss, loss. It's not actually, it's not a bad hero at record, it's just all the losses are very important losses. Losses of Junior Dos Santos, lost to Roy Nelson, lost Travis Brown, lost to Mike lost to Rebrim, Jeff Rochelle. Alexander Volkov, Arlovsky, who lost Arlovsky? Come on, man. Arlovsky can't be anyone now. Um, Tybura, Ben Rothwell, all his losses are very important, and all his wins, besides the Stephen Miocic win, are all very underwhelming. And to, at least until you go back to like 2011, it would be Pat Berry. It's like, it's a good win, but 2011 doesn't matter anymore. So much potential. I, I I don't want him. To, I don't want him to get win or, win or lose. I don't want him to give up yet. He is still a, a strong a strong fighter, and I have high hopes for him. <sighs> now this fight I'm interested about because I watched a little bit of Darren Jewel and. Uh, he looks sharp. And that was also, I uh, seen photos of him looking older, seeing him fight. He is a huge man. He is a big line heavyweight. And uh, defeated Mike Rodriguez. Powerful. No, you know what? I'm going to say now, I'm calling now, I've got money on it. Sam LB is going to put to sleep. Like Sam LB. It's too slow, especially like heavyweight. Sam Alvey's been in this game a long time. <coughs> yeah, lucky boy fight. Veteran knockout of Sam Alvey. <sighs> Imagine hyping up your knockout win of much of um much in Prachnio or whatever his name is. That guy I think has fought three times in the UFC, has lost three times in the UFC by knockout three times. <laughs> I think he got knocked out twice by Sam by Sam Alvey. Let's go Sam Alvey's record real quick. He is, um, he's not doing too flash at the moment. He's on a two fight losing streak. Lost to Jimmy Crute. God, I'm retired. I just wrote Selby. Smart, Sam Alvey. Let's <laughs> see, so, well, what's the ranking at the moment? 32, like he went. Lost to Ryan Spann. That's a rough one. Oh, who was supposed to fight Khalil Roundtree? Ah, oh. That's a shame. Supposed to fight Shogun? Oh, wow. Four fight losing streaks. That is marginal. No, I oh, sorry, I remember even knocked out by Nogira. Knocked out by Crute. When a split decision on Gian Volante. Now that's saying something. Yeah, I don't want to say it. But uh, this is a guinea fight for Jun. Like, I like him and Casey. Oh, that's Tom Watson. I think he had a good record in the middle, right? Why he made is not doing the wonders. I think Marching in Prague now was his first fight at light heavyweight and I, he won that I saw and I was like wow this guy at light heavyweight can do some damage 
uh, saw Machine Precnio fight three more times, and it was like, yeah, nah, that's not happening. Um, Jal Valley, split decision loss. Nogira, Nogira knocked him out. Nogira's got decent boxing. Jimmy Crew knocked him out. And Clidson Abru. Oh, I know that man, but I cannot think of him. And Ryan Spann, split decision. Not flash. Not flash. That's okay. That's okay. Alright, I'm almost finished with the last of Whiskey Nanya 4 0, I think. Am I drink on YouTube? I don't give a shit. <sighs> Your jungle's big. He looks big. He looks like an actual light heavyweight, not a middleweight coming out. Yeah, so what? Interesting thought I had. Not really. I can't say it's interesting. It's just a thought I had. Um, a lot of fighters moving up divisions, I think it's a good thing. The difference between someone from featherweight going to lightweight, or bantam to feather, or whatever, is 10 pounds. Someone going from middleweight to light heavyweight, 20 pounds. Why are there so many middleweights going up to, going up to, to, to light heavyweight? It's a huge weight jump. I thought they're all undersized. Um, Thiago Santos and um, Anthony Smith have had good success and they look like normal size but they're quite tall for middleweight but Chris Wyman oh why did I put juice in the whiskey I don't know I think I made a mistake there but people like Chris Wyman look tiny look tiny like heavyweight Luke Rockhold looked like just a jacked up middleweight why is it so many, um, why so many changes there? Like even these are standing across the ring from one another. Sam looks just out of shape compared to this man. Sam over looks like a middleweight, put on some weight, and this other guy looks like a big, light heavyweight. Let me try the strength that I just made. There's juice in it, and the Sprite, and whiskey. Fuck me, this guy's huge. <laughs> One bit has made $22,000 between Jung, Casey Kenny, and Rachmanov for $90,000 return. Jesus Christ. Okay. Opening beginning of the first round Sam Alley versus uh, Donald Jun. Okay. Uh, three, two, one, opening the first round. Okay, Jun comes right to the middle of the cage. Alvi refuses the club touch, hanging out on the outskirts of the cage, circling. Jun standing a little bit far away to jump in, but uh, faints there. Uh, good pressure coming in right off the back. Pumps out a couple of fake jabs. Sorry about that, sniff. A uh, couple of fake jabs. Sam Alvi back immediately to the cage, not where he wants to be. Um, front kick. Jung out of range, so maybe leans back. Uh, it's more of a range finder than an had makes you pop on it. Um, Jung looks at a way for Sam Avery to throw back to the counter. It faints, faints a kick there. Sam Avery reacts. Uh, Sam Avery doesn't really have his little smiley face in the back of his head for a change. Lead kick from Alvin misses. Jung still right there in his face. It looks like he's about to lean in. Faints the front kick again. Pawn at the lead hand for Jung. Faints the kick again. Lead f uh, lead kick for him. Soon the cage, very nice. Catch up the cage. Sam Avery can't go anywhere. So on the cage, return leg kick from Alvi and a check hook from him. Uh, this is once again uh, uh, orthodox for Jung, uh, southpaw for Alvi. S Alvi fainted hard on that leg kick and eats straight from Jung as well. Jung looks big and strong and intimidating. And then head kick just loosely, eats a lead leg kick from Alvi as he lands from that head kick. Uh, good timing for that off Alvi. He's uh, pouring out that lead hand, uh, Jun is, to get, to open up Sam Alvi's guard to, I assume, to come in the middle with that right hand of his. Oh, slips off the front kick. 
uh, as Senobi uh, fails to capitalize. John still in his face, pressing him against the cage. Um, good pressure, throws right hand, as Senobi parries it and slips out of the way, heading towards the left, open side of John. Lead leg kick from John. Uh, Sam Alvey still will look the strong check hook misses again. Comes in with a nice one too, but circles all the way back to the cage on the opposite side. Uh, Jan and John is right on him again. John fainting but unable to let his hands go. Eat the lead kick and Sam Alvey splits it in but doesn't land anything and Sam Alvey is back on the cage. John coming in strong, uh, um, fainting a lot. Uh, leg, uh, uh, back leg kick and Sam Alvey's kicking that lead leg up now. Obviously fears of John, but lands a good 1-2 uh, on Jung. Jung is still in his face. Uh, so just stands briefly, goes back for uh, Sam Alvey. Oh, eats a 3 crunch combination from Jung. 1-2-1 one, uh, one one from him. And a bit of fainting on every single leg kick. Because, yeah, John stands on his lead leg to throw the punches. Very nice. Stop Sam Alvey from moving away. Very sneaky. Very nice. Suddenly his punch is going a little bit better now. He goes straight, tries to land a... Uh, straight off Sam Alvey's 1-2, doesn't do it, throws a 1-2 off Sam Alvey's check hook, and then Sam Alvey faint, uh, bait, biting hard on these feints. John sort of stands as any super runs, but comes back, faints out, but comes back in. Lead, lead kick, lead kick, uh, oh, Sam Alvey hits him with a good straight, rocks him, someone puts him back a little bit, but John still right in his face, constantly. Sam Alvey back against the cage, uh, lands a straight, uh, in the clinch now, double collar tie for John, but eating uppercuts, and now over hooks from um, Sam Alvey. Uh, one under, one over for Jun. Uh, both fighters one under, one over now in the clinch position. Jun looks big and is pushing against the cage now. Good uh, combinations from Sam Alvey to make Jun react. Beautiful elbow rocks Sam Alvey on the break of the clinch there. And Jun back on him. Salvi, uh, Alvey circling the cage. Lead uppercut. Uh, from Alvey, it seems to be an eye poke. The ref does not call it. John is still in his face. Oh, straight to lands for John as Alvey throws. Oh, uppercut for John too. One, two, three combination as well. All of them land. Alvey is back against the cage. He's throwing, throwing back, and it seems to be landing. But John is straight back on him. He throws in and circles all the way back to the cage again. Alvey needs to get off the cage if he wants to have any success after these combinations. Uh, overhand for John. These guys are throwing hands at each other now. And, and mix in with a lead kick for Alvey there. No doing, some of these punches with his eyes closed, and John is countering quite well. Faint jabs, it's a lead kick though. Uh, John does, and Sam Alvey puts a lead lead kick. Check hook again for Alvey. He's eating these straights though. And Chin's holding up quite well. Circles on the, on the cage, combination coming in, but backs right back up to the cage again. John is still on him. There's Alvey ba uh, baiting, all, uh, ba uh, uh, biting all these feints. John, one two again from John Nurse right in the middle, lands on Sam Alvey. John still fainting and causing Alvey to flinch. One two and that, that lead hook from John clips Sam over the chin. Sam Alvey ducks for an overhand. A ten seconds left in the round one. Uppercut from Alvey misses. Oh, but lands the, the, the lead hook. But another eye poke from John. Riff still does not call it. Uh, that ref needs to get in there and uh, check these eye pokes. We'll check the replay if they were, if they did land, but it appeared to be uh, the case as John is uh, fighting with his hands very, very wide open. A little bit of marking on the left side of uh, Sam Alvey's face. Uh, not a bad round. Probably give it a Jung, but Sam Alvey looked right. It's right. Biting on the face quite a lot, but landed some good punches. Uh, blatant eye poke. Just watched it on uh, the first one. Um, and second, uh, not really. Not really. It kind of went either side of the eye. You can call it an eye poke, but it was not really an eye poke. Oh, Jesus Christ, that jigs off. <laughs> um, coming to this round, uh, Chunk needs to continue what he's doing, pressing him against the cage, but then he needs to throw a little bit more, he needs to uh, unload when he's on the cage, but I'll be wary of Sam Alvey counters, Ca uh, Sam Alvey needs to get off the cage and start pressing forward, he's immediately stand still in the beginning of the round, round two has just started now, and he, uh, Alvey takes one step forward and then just sits back on the cage, yeah, ref warns Jun for his fingers, uh, we are round two, now the time, stamp is 4.43, 2, 1. 
uh, lead uh, snap kick for Jung, it faints the overhand as it stands. 1 2 from Sao where you land on Jung. Jung's still back on him, doesn't want to take a step back. He's a, in this position, he's just throw more straight lands and a lead uppercut lands for Jung on Sam Alvey right on the chin. Sam Alvey takes it well. Uh, both throw there and neither of them land too cleanly. Alvey looking looking to circle out on Jung but leads to, uh, circles towards his power hand. Body jab from Jung lands nicely. Faints it again. And faints it again for a third time. Alvey comes back with a, uh, with a right hand, left hand, sorry. Uh, but unable to land, fighting all these feints. He's planning on all the feints that he throws. Uh, a half assed leg kick thrown for Jun, but return from Sam Alvey. Nice lead leg kick on the outside of Jun's leg. Fainting again, and Jun is. Those are one, two, not leaning in. Sam Alvey faints again. They're both fighting on each other's feints. Um, throws a wild right hook. Jun does, and Sam Alvey counters with a cheek hook coming in. Nice jab to the body from Jun. Strong leg kick. Alvey faints back. Jun, lots of feints. Him and Alvey going backwards. No, a body hook for Jung. Sam Alvey throws a wayward jab. Uh, hey, Sam Alvey's working with feet really close together. That's the moment to strike. He's unable to throw his heavy strikes back. But every time he's throwing a little strike, Jun takes a massive, massive step back and then comes back in. He's just a short miss step up. One, two for him. We'll just nick Sam Alvey. Sam Alvey's circling well, looking sharp. Coming in. Excuse me. A jab from Sam Alvey again. A jab has the armpit of Chung Jun still on him. A jab again from Sam Alvey. And he's followed up with a little bit more than just that one jab. Oh, and head kick from Chung that just missed. One, two from Sam Alvey lands nicely. Chung's from there breathing a little bit heavy now. Switches so stance as he comes in to throw. A right hook, Jun does, but switches back to his orthodox stance. Lead uppercut again, Jun is going in there, not throwing anything, and then Sam Alvey's countering him. Come back to lead leak for Sam Alvey, lands well. Jung coming in, 1 2 from him, kind of corkscrew uppercut instead of a 1, apologies. Oh, powerful jab from Sam Alvey, lands on him there, but Jung does, eats it, as unfazed, and just stays in his face. Alvey looking better this round. Jung, oh, strong right hand from Jung. Clips Alvey. Alvey doesn't care. Sends something to his corner. One two from Sam Alvey. Miss. No, it's one two from both people. See be what, what the game plan is. A little lead hook from Sam Alvey. Fingers. I need to be careful from Jung. He's going to poke his finger out there. Powerful lead kick from Jung. Throws him over his back. He's going to fade there, and Sam will pick his leg up again. Cheek hook from Sam Alvey misses as Jung faints. Faints brings up the jab from Sam Alvey. Jung's right in there. Right hand from Sam Alvey backs. Jung up, but back once again. Jung back on, gets the fence. Jung throws uh, a straight hand. Nowhere near the target. Jab backs up as well. Sam Alvey runs forward. It throws one punch in that run, but runs back to the cage. A little bit of damage on the uh, right eye of Sam Alvey, probably from the uh, fingers. L lead leg kick from a Sam Alvey causes John to stumble a little bit. Oh! Left, right from Jung. Uh, the left hand looked powerful but missed, and the right hand lands, but nothing a Sam Alvey can't handle at the moment. Yeah, Jung is on. On Sam Alvey, a little bit of blood coming out of the nose of Sam Alvey. Uh, Lee, a cook's uppercut, followed by a strike from Sam Alvey. Jung waves his hand and shrugs it off. Again, the cook's uppercut lands, and uh, Jung walks on. And again, the cook's uppercut lands, again. And uh, Jung eats that one clean. And the cook's uppercut again seems to be the money shot working for Alvey. Let's have that lead leg kick. Is, is landing very well, putting him really off balance. 10 seconds left in the round. Uh, 45 to 34 strikes to Alvi. Good combination there for, from Alvi. Spinning heel kick from Alvi in, in round two. Uh, that appears to be one round apiece between fighters. I don't know if John's fading. I ref warning him about his uh, fingers poking out.
uh, I don't know what is or what's going on for him, but he seems to be backing Sammy up very nicely and is getting in there quite quickly. But seems not going to be throwing enough. Be his damage on the left temple, the right eye, and this is a scratch on his nose as well as the blood coming out of his nose. Oh god, it drinks. Oh, it drinks nasty. I'm gonna need to pull that out. Okay. There we go, there's a glove touch now, and it begins the third round now. The time is 4 minutes and 52, 51, 50 seconds. Jung mm. is there, same thing, Lee uh, snap body kick from him. Uh, not lead, sorry, back body kick. Um, straight down the middle, Teak brother. Lead body kick by Sam Alby, followed by a 1 2 and a corkscrew uppercut. Very nice. Keeps it. Uh, corkscrew uppercut. Dro oh, Jung drops Sam Alby. Don't know what hit him though. Drops him. And one. Oh, landed right, uh, right hands. Sam Alby. Now the turtle position. Jung has him again. Takes his back. Back to the feet they are. Jung has back control. Both hands locked. Round his waist. Sam Alby had hard, but seemed to recover well. Looked like Jung and an upcut as he came uh, up, up kick as he came in. Oh, right hand, powerful right hand from the back. Um, same position. Now I'll be blocking well. Good back control for Jun. Hold him there. Looks like he's about to go for a lift. Leaning into him in the cage. Same be turns. Uh, Jun now in the clinch position against the cage. Jun disengages. A lot of blood coming out of the nose. Same LB. Same LB looks busted up. A little bit wobbly. Less confidence moving around as he had before. John, in his face. I want my uh, my money. One, two, four. John again lands. Sam Alvey comes through with a double right straight. Backs him up, but John's still in his face. Oh, that would be uppercut again. That was beautiful. Throws the right hand. Sorry, throws the left hand. Gets John to cover up and lands uppercut. Two uppercuts in a row. Three uppercuts in a row. Oh, Sam Alvey. John's on the cage now. Sam coming forward now. But turns around. Sam Alvey back on the cage. John throws combination after getting hurt there from like three uppercuts in a row from Sam Alvey. Sam Alvey's eye looks like it's swelling up underneath his right eye. Uppercut again. That is his. John is struggling with his uppercuts. It's been consistent throughout the fight. The leg kick again from Sam Alvey. John in his face again. Jab from Sam Alvey. Causes John's head to snap back a little bit. Oh, uppercut again. Faints the lead. Lead hook. But so just an uppercut. Beautiful work from Sam Alvey. And like they dropped Sam Alvey with an um, elbow early in the round. Oh, right hand from Sam Alvey. Hit him clean. Sam Alvey swinging, but his, it is all over the show right now, but it's swinging back for nothing. Hand fighting for, for Jung. He grabs a collar tie. Sam Alvey looks strong, though. Good body lock for, Sam, uh, for Jung. Looks like he's going for a trip. Uh, unable to trip. Sam Alvey locked up in the clinch. Jung should disengage now. We'll go back to the striking now. Looks good. Sam Alvey breathing heavy. Eyes are looking. But no one is home. Go for the trip. Can we get it? Oh, he goes on the trip again. Doesn't quite get it. Uh, one under, one over for both fighters. If Jun should disengage and wants me to make my money back. A little bit of body work for Jun. Same other girls with a dollar collar tie. Jun fights inside and grabs a kind of head and arm collar tie. Is going to sneak at the back door and take uh, Sam Alvey's back here. But Sam Alvey holding on strong, puts his back against the cage. John is unable to get to his back. Uh, a deep overhook for Sam Alvey. Back to one under, one over. One minute ten left in the round. Uh, John grabs a leg. Looks about a trip, Sam Alvey. Sam Alvey keeps his balance quite nicely. Sam Alvey turns it round. John now has it back to the cage and is breathing heavy. John turns it around again. Sam Alvey's back to the cage. Those are a little knee there, nothing to it. 
I need some junk against the cage. Knees back and forth. Grabs a leg and goes for the tr and goes for uh, we uh, take down there. Does not get it. Back to the clinch again. Uh, single collar tie for Sam Alby with the overhook on the right arm. Oh my God! Beautiful elbow from Jung sends Alby uh, stumbling. 24 seconds left. If Jung wants to get the finish now, he needs to move now. Sam Alby needs something big this round to get back. Hey, I don't think he has. Jung throwing for the fences there, unable to to land anything. D uh, 11. 10 seconds left. A combination from Jung there lands an uppercut and a right hand. Uh, uppercut from Sam Alvey again. Tends to leave. Uh, Jung weighs him on. Um, a head kick from Sam Alvey. Nothing to it. End of the fight. Two rounds to one. Jung. Elbow. Beautiful elbow as, as Sam Alvey comes in twice. Very nice. Three elbows that round. All three of them send Sam Alvey stumbling. Should have got to it sooner. Well done. I lost money on that one, but I was close. Right. I'll be back in a minute. Once I um, get rid of this fucking whiskey. Jesus Christ, it's disgusting. Just going back in now. It seems like it was a draw. A split draw. I, I missed. Interesting decision. Uh, it was a draw. Okay. Um, right. Okay. We're back in a second. That's okay. Um, my YouTube stream saying it ended. Which I don't think it has, but it's, it's annoying anyway.
next fight coming up on the fight card is uh, Alex Oliveira uh, versus. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to butcher this. Shevket Rekmanov. Shevket Rekmanov. A very unprofessional of me to not know his name prior to this, but um, Alex Oliveira, fun fight, cheats a lot, but fun fight. Hmm, I don't like how the UFC is saying that my event has ended. I mean, it clearly has not. I think they changed Sam Alvey to the... There we go, now we're back in it, we're all good. Um, Daniel Cormier is uh, now talking about the Justin Gage Tony Ferguson fight. But we've already talked about that, so we need to talk about it again. Interesting um, commentator choice, I thought. I think with um, Khabib and DC being um, teammates, but I, um, I, I, I'm not the biggest fan in the world of um, DC as a commentator. I don't mind him; but he's not the best in the world, I don't think. Um, but I should be interested to see his biases as Khabib fights. But um. Yeah, it'll be interesting. <sighs> Rachmanov versus Oliveira is up now. Oliveira inconsistent in his wins, but his wins have been good. Uh, one of a gun, no, no loss to Gunnar Nelson. His wins haven't been great. His losses have been good, though. Yancy Medeiros, Cowboy Cerrone. Beat Carlos Connor though, on the later side of his career, something it's not an amazing win, but hey, who am I to say? Tim Means, I like Tim Means, I like Sarah B. Tim Means, and um, Max Griffin. Interesting, I I'm looking forward to uh, seeing one of win this one. A um, bit annoyed about my draw in the last fight though. I love the first to walk out and dance for 20 minutes, which would be a pain. Um, Rachmanov comes out with a nice cool hat like a bee, but a little bit cooler. Looks like it's like a, like a, um, like a fox hat. First fighter to sign from Kazakhstan. Good on him. Good on him. It's a cool hat. 12 0. Not an easy UFC debut for him. Uh, um, he needs to, he'll need to weather the storm, weather the early storm from uh, Oliveira, because Oliveira uh, typically comes out strong in the first round and will put the pressure on, but uh, it's a tendency to fade. Later in the rounds, um, you notice that in the Mike Perry fight and the Yancey Medeiros fight, uh, he was there in the beginning, but uh, was not there in the end. So I expect a early finish from Oliveira or a late finish from Rachmanov. Have not seen any of Rachmanov's fights prior, so I don't know what to expect. But I am uh, looking forward to it none nonetheless. Oh, see Michael Kears is up there in the booth. Uh, was rumoured that he was going to fight comes up uh, Jemayev, but and Leon Edwards took the fight. Um, good on him. Good on Leon Edwards. Just as I'm talking about the lightweight division. 
Um, the top and the bottom of the vision is looking slow at the moment. Uh, between Masvidal, Wonderboy, Burns, Usman, and Colby, not a lot is going on up there. Gilbert Burns and Kamara Usman is the fight to make. Colby and Covington, if he's smart, should wait on that to finish. But I do want to see Colby fight again and Wonderboy fight again. Here he is, Alice Vera coming out. No cowboy hat, but uh, doing, his, doing a little jig on his way out. Looking comfortable, looking happy like he always does, singing along to his songs. Hmm. Kind of used to make 155. He's a big welterweight. I don't know how he made 155. 155, I was saying earlier about the middleweights moving up to light even weight. Same, um,. Same uh, thing with 155 to 170. Um, a, a, a bigger, a bigger jump in weight. Surprise at 70 doing it. I feel that the two main ones that people jump between is the middleweight and light heavyweight, and welterweight and lightweight. And they are the biggest weight differences between the divisions. Well, also, welterweight to middleweight, so they went. Fuck my love. Fight win streak for Alex Oliveira. We'll see how he handles the pressure from the, from the UFC debut fighting of Rakmanov. Rakmanov was calm, walking back and forth between the corner, but uh, in, in his corner. Was calm, cool, collected, 12 and 0, 100% finish rate. <sighs> okay, I'm calling my prediction now. I'm going to say Rakmanov. I like, I, like I like the look of him. Twenty-six years old, six foot one for Rachmanov. Um, Alex Oliveira, Mrs. Weight. I feel like he was weight before. Mrs. Weight though, one seventy-three pounds, uh, half inch reach advantage for Rachmanov. Big, big world weight. Bruce Buffer coming in now, doing the announcements. I think I turn it on. Can I turn it on here. Martial artist holding a perfect professional record. 12 wins, no losses. He stands six feet one inch tall, weighing in at 171 pounds. Fighting at a Coca Chateau, Kazakhstan, Shavkat Nomad Rokmanov. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, a Muay Thai kickboxer holding professional record. 22 wins, 8 losses, 1 draw, 2 no contests. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 173 pounds. Fighting out of Trace Rios, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Alex Cowboy Oliveira. Lucas Pisaki, the referee. Weird code is put in the corner of the UFC. Alright, beginning of the first round. It has begun. The time is 47.654. Okay, Oliveira moving around, circling a lot, dropping low there. Fades, lots of fades around Oliveira. Looks a little bit on the side against the Rakhmanov. Rakhmanov coming forward, lots of little fades. Lead hook for Oliveira lands clean against Rachmanov and the circles away. Rachmanov, um, Oliveira circling around the cage, bouncing back and forth. Lead, uh, lead kick from Rachmanov lands nicely. Lead lead kick from Oliveira returns. Jumping back and forth for Oliveira. Good, looks good, good, good jab there. Doesn't quite land for Oliveira. Rachmanov coming forward. 
fighting all their violent fights by enough I had. <coughs> Both fighters fighting. Oh, well, one, two from uh, Oliver as a land. Dragonov right in front of him there. Strongly kick from Rachmanov. Lands against Oliveira. Oliveira staying, bouncing back and forth in front of him. Front snap kick for Oliveira. Caught by Rachmanov. Nothing, nothing to it. Oh, eats a kick. Lead kick. Uh, Rob, Rob does. And then uh, uh, overhand uh, left hook for Alex Oliveira does not land. Strongly kick for Rakanov again lands. Alex Oliveira faints in. Oh, overhand right for Rakanov lands clean, followed by left hook. Knee to the body for Alex Oliveira. Oliveira covering up on the fence. He moving. He locks up the collar, tin, uh, collar tie. Uh, um, Rakanov landing punches to the body there. Breaks the collar tie and uh, back into a clinch there. Over under for Rakanov. Alex Oliveira resting the cage there. Locks up by the lock. Over under, uh, hands are not locked for Rachmanov. He drops down as uh, one hand around the, around the uh, left thigh. Uh, right, right. Lands a good knee from the body lock position. Oliveira trying to seal the cage. Hooks a leg. Rachmanov does. Fails to get the takedown. Fires a good knee. Body lock for, uh, well, over, over under body lock for Alex Oliveira. Let's go of it. Uh, Rachmanov appears to have the body lock of an under and over for Oliveira as pressing against the cage. Oliver turns him around. Rachmanov with his back on the cage now. Good head position for Oliveira. Um, pressing him there for the time being. Short the rabbit punches for Rachmanov. Good knee from Oliveira. Hooks the leg, unable to take him down. Oliveira's uh, knees the thigh once, twice, three times. Two minutes left in the round. L constant punches from Rachmanov landing. Not very hard. Oliveira hooks the leg again. His leg's now behind Rachmanov's leg. With a, with a, a Rachmanov grabs the leg with a deep overhook and tries to trip. Alex Oliveira fails. Oliveira knees him and pushes him back to the cage. Rachmanov grabs a knee but is unable to do anything with it. To fighting for underhooks. Rachmanov is as Oliveira has double underhooks. Uh, and right now, let's go over and grabs an overhook on, uh, shoots for a double leg, looks like it's got the hands class, switches off to a single leg, unable to get it, goes back up to the body lock, once again, uh, one under, one over. Good knee again for Oliveira, Oliveira pressing him high against the cage. Strong head position for Rachmanov here, puts back against the cage. Good knee, Oliver shoots for a double leg again. Looks like his hands class, almost lifting Rachmanov off the head. Uh, Rachmanov in the armpits, holding the hands, uh, holding the armpits, sorry, was unable, uh, uh, Oliver was unable to finish the takedown. Back to the clinch again. Oliver shoots again for the double leg. Um, Rachmanov has it over. Looks like he's got a grab for a guillotine. Locks his hands around Oliver's neck and arm. Arm and guillotine. He sits for a, sits for a deep. He might have this. He sits in for a deep in there. He's going to Oliver is pulling on the, on the shoulder. He taps for it. That's another arm and guillotine. First round submission for Rachmanov. What a UFC debut. Hurts Oliver early. Locks up the clinch. Oliveira does an uncharacteristic double leg three times in a row. Uh, Rachmanov locks in the head and arm, uh, arm and guillotine rather, and sits back for it nice and tight, squeezes it there. First round submission, Rachmanov. Beautiful use of debut. Two in the uh, win column for me, the first round finishes. I wonder if they'll show the, uh, where you heard him again. There it is. So Oliver shows so it straight, hits Kamzat, uh, Kamzat hits Rakhmanov, oh, that's earlier in the fight, 1-2, Rakhmanov hits a check, no not a check hook, an overhand over the jab of Oliveira, and a beautiful knee, Oliveira closes up, covers up against the cage, and that's where the clinches begins, arm and guillotine, 
Open up enough, sits for it. Nice, deep, with a squeeze. Must be unreal on this man. Well done, Rakmanov. Powerful arm and guillotine. Close on the map. Oh. oh man, it is currently 10 to 6 in the morning. Bruce Buffett doing the, doing the announcements now. I'll put that audio back on for you guys. <laughs> Prediction I made. Oh, yeah, that was right. So it's my own. Hall versus Silver next week. Yes, he's popping it up. Silver is final fight apparently in the UFC. Well, uh, ever, hopefully. Ever he knows it's good for him, he should retire now. One win in the last like, five years. Should probably king it. Twenty seconds left in that first round. Is that my three first round finishes then? Because that one was um in the end of the first round. I think that is money, baby, money. Good on him. Good on him. Well done. I'll give him a cheeky follow. Eh? Nathaniel Wood, Casey Kenny, this one is going to be fun. I think I've got money on Wood. Tough fight for him though, but I like Wood. I like, I like Wood. Uh, excuse me. comments on um, UFC news alerts post about the card. Everyone's not happy at how early it starts. Um, I'll second that. I'm fucking tired. Everyone giving praise. Under forty pounds, this thing's fine. I don't know why. Oh, I think it would ha subbed Jose Quinones. 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 Why can't I say that word? Quinones. Most very well known for that fight in Cage Warriors. We got hurt real early. Nathaniel Wood, that is. And I came back to win my arm, pulling it on the fence. It was very nice. Casey Key, though. Went at the sub Louis Smolka. Lost to Marab Dishvili, but that's, that's okay. Marab Dishvili is a um, freak show. He's an animal. Oh, I like, my, I like my Nathaniel Wood.
he also hung all over it in my white so we're not going to have got a good got a good amount of money for that one just have a biscuit real quick This fighter came to so awkward when they're sitting in there. Alright. Oh, let's probably talk about Seven Stroop's last fight and what the fuck happened there. Where Seven Stroop looked good against Blaine Rothwell. And then to counter the fact that he looked good, Ben Rothwell kicked him in the dick three times. It was bad on its own. But then after the third um, awful leg kick, um, uh, who was it? It was Dan Mercliata. Covered his mic and was like, Hey, Struve, um, you're probably winning this fight. Uh, there's only like 30 seconds left in the round. Did you want to just uh, keep the fight going and see how you feel at the end of the round? And then Stu was like, yeah, all right then. And he gets uh, TKO'd for the round ends. So, Dan Mugliata was not the uh, most popular man in the world after that uh, decision. As you can uh, possibly imagine. Oh well. What can you do? Oh, my God, was it turned off? I have to have my comments on. Yeah.
Hey, we got a chat now. That's exciting. Oh, very sad losses. Khabib was also first fight since the loss of his father. Very sad. Right, what else is there worth talking about on this card? Oh, I guess we can talk about uh, Magomed and Kalai versus the Young Lava. <coughs> so, we'll start off with the first fight um, Magomed and Kalayev comes out strong, looks good I think lands a uh, overhand right I think on Ian Kuzlava Ooh, Ian Kuzlava plays possum in a the, the rope and uh, it's thrown back it's thrown back decent punches and um, in doing so uh in between the throwing of the punches and the blocking of the punches and kicks, uh, just, just the reply gets called off. Uh, marginal decision by the referee, but he just could love for it himself. Um, yeah, just wanting to the fight. This rematch, I feel like, should go um, anchor lives away. As he's looked pretty good in his last fight, he's made that beautiful snap kick on, uh, was it Bing Bose? I can't remember who it was, it's on my head. Um, beautiful snap front kick knocks him out cold uh, and beat up someone else as well prior to him. But the thing, the blemish on his record is um, his loss to Paul Craig. We got triangle with like four seconds left in the final round. Marginal. Oh, who, who, might, who might judge? But uh, four seconds left, or whatever it was, two seconds left, last second. Rough. Rough, rough loss. Ian Kutulaba is a phenomenal fighter for the first round. He walked over to Shira and made Tashira look like he was an amateur in that first round. But in the second round, he had nothing left. Nothing left. And uh, got the snob in him. And then threw a, threw a kick. And they fell. He didn't even get tripped or anything. He fell off that kick. And they glowed the with the shit out of him. Uh, Young Kuzlava also beat Khalil Roundtree by a smalling in the first round. See? First round, fun. Same with the other guy who held in the clinch and just elbowed the shit out of him. Fun. Um, and then you have him fighting uh, Jerry Kanania. Fun for the first round. But at the end of the third round, Jerry is walking him down, hands down, just striking the fear into Kuzlava. Um. Yeah, fun for the first round. Let's, uh, let's have a look at his actual record. Who the hell is his name? Kutala. Yeah, Kutala. So, he, he fought Megamed and Kalayev on the 29th of February, and that's the fight that he lost, and then he is scheduled a rematch on the 18th of 4th, and that one was cancelled, and then he's going to fight Evans Improve, which would be a fun fight actually, and that was cancelled, and he's going to fight Megamed and Kalayev again on the 15th of the 8th, and they were cancelled, and he's going to fight him on the 29th of the 8th cancelled and now we're here we are today so yeah when clear round three lost to Glover to Shira well there was the um Antigulov was the guy he elbowed and then he, he beat to Silva lost to Jerry Kananir lost to Misha Surkinov
Yeah, Nick, coming up next is the uh, Crazy Kenny, um, Nathaniel Wood. I'm just going to go bathroom real quick. Black belt runner's neck. I didn't know he was a black belt. But you know he's a black belt now because he wore his black belt runner's head. So. Oh, for earlier this month. All right, we're to pour another whiskey. and put some uh, water in the, um, the whiskey because it's too fucking rough. Man, I think it was coming out there looking uh, as fucking gorgeous as ever. Beautiful man he is. Sponsored by Proper 12. Terrible. Oh, classic thing of coach slapping the fighter. Love it. That's why I was a catchweight. Yeah, this fight's on three weeks' notice, so that's why I was on catchweight. That's okay. Apparently, tough weight cut, apparently. So, see how he looks in the long run. Casey can eat a taller fighter with a shorter reach.
Casey Keene looks cool. It's calm. Not say it's meant to be there. Yeah, it should be. Uh, I'm looking forward to this one. This will be a fun fight. Oof. That was he's not going down very good. Yeah, yeah well, let's go. Here we go, being the first round. Um, in the ready, ready, three, two, one. The beginning of the first round here. 58-57. Nathaniel Wood opening with a leg kick strong once again. Open stance with both fighters. Combination from Nathaniel Wood coming out. Casey Kenny, uh, South Poor, Nathaniel Wood, Orthodox. Lots of kicks coming back and forth from both fighters. Frames from Casey Kenny. Circling. Pro pressing Nathaniel Wood back to the uh, cage. Wood against the cage. Easy body kick from Casey Kenny. Lead kick from Wood. A kick from Wood, sorry, as Kenny lands that like a combination from Wood, backs Kenny up to the cage. Lead leg kick for Wood. Jab, combination there from Wood again. Front snap kick, ducks under the right hand return from uh, Kenny. Head kick, slips Nathaniel Wood, make the pay for it as he gets back to his feet. Lead kick again from Wood, and again from Wood. That one stumbles him a little bit, but return Kenny returns another lead kick from. Wood, but return from Casey Kenny and stumbles Wood. Trading lead kicks now. Trading lead kicks and check hook from Wood there to catch Casey Kenny. Back and forth combinations. Oh, combination from Kenny causes Nathaniel Wood to cover up, but he backs away. Kick again. Eats a right hand, a left hand from Kenny. Wood circling on the cage now. Oh, powerful lead kick from Wood as he comes in. A return from Kenny. And again, return from Wood. Eat a body kick, Wood does, from Kenny. Kick, lead kick again. Check hook from Wood coming forward, though. Snap body kick. Kenny returns a lead kick as Wood lands. <sighs> Sorry. A lot of feints coming in. Both throw one. Um, backhand straights. Oh, Casey lands on Wood. Lee kicks more, Lee kicks forward. Body straight for Wood. Oh, nothing more. Wood on the, on the cage. A spinning back elbow from Katie Kenny. Just missed. Lee kick from Wood again. Oh, so lands a straight and a, and a left hook. Wood does on Kenny. Good face on the right side. Jad from uh, Kenny. Coming forward. Lee kick again from Kenny. Wood eats it. Come forward now. Faints again. Oh, straight. From Kenny on the nose of Nathaniel Wood. And again, good knees in the clinch there from Casey Kenny. Back away from the clinch. Uh, snap kick from Wood there, followed by lead kick. And another lead lead kick. Casey just hit, lands a lead check hook on Wood. Oh, powerful straight from, from Casey Kenny. Lands on Wood as it backs into the cage. Both fighters pulling their knees up, fainting. Lead kick from Kenny. Oh, faints the leg kick, comes with a straight, lands perfectly, and again that straight lands again. Good leg kick from Nathaniel Wood there. Oh, powerful straight from Kenny. Oh, Nathaniel Wood walks forward and eats a two-punch combination for, for his, uh, his efforts. Body straight from Kenny. Oh, powerful straight from Kenny again. Kenny is looking on fire tonight. <coughs> Body straight from Kenny. Return with a snap kick from uh, Wood. Movement's still looking good for both fighters. Kenny, uh, uh, sorry, Wood changes uh, stance or switches back now. Throws one, two, but misses both punches. Leg kick again. Oh, eats a beautiful straight hand from Kenny. Eats straight hand again. The previous one snapped his head back, but he's still standing there. That looks alright. Backhand from Casey Kenny. Kenny faints the takedown. 
or spinning back into the body lands nicely. Wood a step back, but is back in the snap body kick from Wood twice. Oh, lead left hook from uh, Wood. Casey returns with a straight hand. Both fighters fainting lead kicks against one another. Lead kick again from Kenny. Causes Wood to throw his lead back. His leg may be injured. Snap front kick from Wood. Oh, straight Superman punch on one from Kenny. Just skims the guard of Nathaniel Wood. Body kick again from Kenny. Oh, powerful spinning back kick. Nathaniel Wood returns it but doesn't land as clean. 10 seconds left in the round. Combination of both fighters, both land. Head kick from Kenny. Round one done. First round goes against Kenny. Beautiful first round. High pace, high action. Both fighters land. Um, uh, wood on the uh, losing side of those combinations. Of those exchanges, rather. Brad Beckett in the corner of Nathaniel Wood. Uh, Brad Pickett calling from here would throw more leg kicks. Um, Nathaniel Wood's calling, calling for elbows and they ought to call out at two minutes for um, Casey Kenny to uh, shoot for a takedown and get him to the ground within two minutes left of the round. <sighs> Beginning of the second round. Start the second round here. Immediately lead kick from Nathaniel Wood. Turn forward, return from Casey Kenny. A straight hand and lead, it doubles up the um, the uh, left hook from Wood there. Lead kick again from Nathaniel Wood. 4 42, 41. Two spinning back kicks from Casey Kenny. Neither of them land that clean. A lead kick from Wood. Oh, straight down the middle. Lands directly on Nathaniel Wood's nodes. He's still with it though. More leg work from uh, Casey Kenny. Combination. Kenny stumbles backwards. Good lead elbow for Nathaniel Wood. Elbow returned for Casey Kenny. Lead elbow, uh, upward elbow rather. Lead kick and a right hand um, for Kenny. Snap down the middle for Wood and uh, Casey Kenny was with an overhand right. Overhand left, overhand right. Body kick from Kenny. Lead kicks again for Wood. And nicely, three in a row there. Lead hook for Wood. Doesn't quite land. Kenny shoots from the takedown too far out, does not get it. Good body kick from uh, Kenny. Oh, check hook from Wood lands clean. Straight for Kenny, uh, sorry for Wood, followed by a lead hook for Wood. Eat the lead kick he does from Kenny. Kick kick. Straight from Nathaniel, lands nicely. Lead kick, uh, lead kick again. Lead kick returns from Kenny, is lead kicking back one for one almost. Jab for Nathaniel Wood, backs him back a little bit, but Kenny's still on him. Oh, check hook from Kenny. Slowing down a little bit, the fighters are. Understandable, such a high pace has been. Uppercut lands for Kenny, nothing on it. Body kick, powerful body kick. Lands for Kenny. Leg kicks again for Nathaniel Wood, a couple jabs. 1 2 from Kenny. Oh, chair cook lands very nicely for Casey Kenny there over um, Nathaniel Wood's jab. But Nathaniel Wood's jab is looking for sharper now. 
for her wood, looking sharper this round. Okay, it's getting slow down, so the combinations are coming more clean for wood now. Oh, straight, two straights in a row, three straights in a row from Kenny Lamb. Oh, Lukic lands from Kenny there. Good leg kick there for Wood. Oh, Wood just out of range for those combination there. Fired from uh, Kenny. Kenny walking forward though, but visibly slowing down. Oh, Kenny shoots to Kirk as a boy lock, unable to finish it. Nice things left in the round. Straight thrown by Kenny, parried by Wood, and returns with a nice check hook. Oh, powerful straight. St lands directly on the face of uh, Wood and snaps his head back. Didn't land that time though. Ooh. Enters the clinch, Kenny does, and throws a good knee from it. Wood almost like he shot for his own takedown there, not really committing to it. Didn't get anywhere. Back to striking there. Oh, beautiful head movement from Wood. Just misses. Kenny does with his strikes. Kenny signed down visibly. Four down punches in round one, 25 at this point in round two. Combination from Wood comes in, lands beautiful. Kenny backs up. Kenny's now back on the cage. Wood's the one man going forward. Kenny starts coming forward again now. And Sino about to go on. Combination from Kenny, nothing lands. Once again, nothing lands. Wide, looping punches from Kenny. Not landing this time. Wayward shot from out in the middle of the cage. No luck on that one there. Straight again, straight to his money for Casey Kenny. 10 seconds left. Oh, beautiful leg kick buckles the knee of uh, Wood. Goes to his knee, but get back up to it. Round two is over. Mm, tough second round to score. Might have to give it to Kenny again. He's looking slower now. The straight is a money shot for um, Casey Kenny. Uh, and here would should we go back to the lead kick? Actually, both of us should go back to the lead kicks. They're both landing beautiful lead kicks. Yeah, his corner is uh, agreeing with what I was saying, where his shots are coming from too far away, and uh, Nathaniel Wood is uh, too easy to defend them. <sighs> Out the pace, Nathaniel Wood, for this round. Here we go, round three. About to begin. Up and rearing to go, these boys are. Huh? Big high five. Start of round three. Leg kick immediately from Casey. Doesn't land. Return from Wood. Lands. Speed from Wood is handed. Check hook from Wood lands again. Casey Kenny coming out with a uh, quick pace as well. And Nathaniel Wood looking sharp. 446, 445, 44, 43. Oh, very nice leg kick again for Nathaniel Wood. He should get back to them. It's powerful. Straight hand just missed. Jam from Wood again. Leg kick. And a straight. Nothing to it. Casey looks slower. Coming in the straights are uh, very slow. Now here, leg kick lands from Casey Kenny though. Faints it again. Straight from Casey Kenny though. Oh. Good body straight from Kenny. Jam return from Wood. Pushing Kenny back now. Can you back on him though? Oh, when we go for a trip, doesn't quite get it. Good combination there from Wood. Leak again, lands. Oh, Wood fades to take down, doesn't quite get it, but throws a, a, a good punch off it. Oh, good slip and punches of the wood as Casey throws a return punch from uh, Nathaniel's pressure. Good leg kicks again. Uh, four good leg kicks in a row there for wood. Kenny doesn't answer them because that was a combat with a uh, lead check hook that uh, Nathaniel counters. Oh, 
deep, deep shot for Casey Kenny right on the back of Nathaniel Wood. Um, Nathaniel Wood against the cage. Um, Casey Kenny doesn't quite get the back. He's hanging on his back though, trying to get the hooks in. He falls down, or fall, pulls him down with him, doesn't quite get it though. Now leaning into him, uh, Nathaniel Wood on his hands and feet. Uh, no knees are allowed in this position here against the cage. But uh, Casey Kenny lands underneath the body. There was staying there, hands on the mat still. Casey Kenny, good back control. Um, hooks the leg, uh, not around the back, to take the back, but more as like a, uh, an Uchima trip type position with his leg. Uh, but then grapevine his leg around the ankle as well to keep the wood for standing up too, too easily. Now goes up behind the leg. Oh, beautiful switch for uh, Nathan Wood, doesn't quite land, but uh, gets back to his knees. Uh, Casey Kenny's one hook in. Uh, he loses the hook, but he's now on the back there, back to hands and feet for um, wood, uh, wood. But Casey Kenny, still glued to him, stands up now, wraps the head in a guillotine type position, but is uh, not going to be able to get it from where he is standing. Or he might. There we go. Wood, back to his feet again after Casey pulled him down to his knees. There, yeah, separation now, they're back to striking 1 minute 50 the round. Combination with Casey Kenny. And a good body kick. And if he will shoot his own takedown, bails on it, but it lands a good punch off it. Hundred and twelve strikes. Significant strikes for Wood to ninety four for Kenny. High pace for these fighters. Beautiful fight. Ooh. Combination on both sides there. Nothing lands too flash though. Clinching in now, full thing. Oh, here was she goes for a trip and switches to a single leg but fails. It falls down, gets back up. He's a check hook for his efforts. Combination there from Casey Kenny doesn't land anything though. Deep shot from Casey Kenny. Nathaniel Wood sprawls well, limb legs out of the single leg transition. Full straight from Casey Kenny, right on the nose of um, Wood and Silver Snap's head back. Oh, pull back, straight hand from Casey Kenny, just misses. 30 seconds left in the round. Close round, it could be in the fight. Combination there, but here Wood lands clean. Oh, beautiful leg kick stops Casey Kenny while he's throwing a punch. Oh, nice combination from Wood there. Kenny shoots in, the Wood defends it back at the clinch against the cage, 10 seconds left. Casey Kenny, uh, Wood separates and is throwing hands against the cage now. Good combination there from him, back to the center of the cage they go. That is the end of the round. Close fight, I think then went to Casey Kenny. Sixty-five to seventy. Key strikes from Casey Kenny to Nathaniel Wood. Twenty-four for um, the body for Casey, and fifty-two lead kicks for Nathaniel Wood. Very nice. Good fight. Here at decision time. Casey Kerry wearing his black round and his dicky Kitty.
split decision in case in my case. Casey Kenny, you know decision. Yep, very nice. Good performance. Oh, apologies. There was one more fight this in this year. Well, I guess a Kenny. Good performance. Um, I don't like when fighters don't call out people. Personally, they should be doing that. All right, we're now into our headlining prelim fight. So while I, while that comes out, I'm going to quickly buy the pay per view. I'll be back in a minute. Here we are. Looking forward to the stream vs. Two Vance. That should be a fun fight. I never 
my sun's come up. The sun's come up. It's a beautiful overcast day in sunny New Zealand. It'll be interesting to see how Tuivasa deals with the height disadvantage. Because he likes to crash forward into clinches. But that's not really worked too flashy against a man who's so much taller than him. But he has been training out of AKA, AKA with Daniel Cormier and Khabib. So I suspect his wrestling will, will have improved. Um, that was what let him down in his previous two fights against Ivanov and the fucking give me fine to Sizniak. Was his wrestling. So here we go. The real question is, will he do a shoey post-fight? just realized I was muted that entire time. I was saying the um, I'm curious to see how um, Tuivasa deals with the height of, uh, of Stephen Struve because he does crash forward with elbows into um, into clinches and I don't know how well they're working with a man as big and as tall as Struve. But also he's been training with Daniel Cormier and Khabib in uh, AKA so his wrestling should hopefully have improved because that was his big um, downfall in his previous two fights between Spiviak and um, and uh, um, Ivanov uh, also his ground defense is not amazing but he's aware of that and has uh, made jokes about himself in that in the past for his lack of jiu-jitsu uh, prowess and you saw that in his fight against Dos Santos where he got clipped with a right hand he got dropped and uh, to, um, Dos Santos managed to get into mount that was throwing bombs from mount and Tuvasa decided to swing from the bottom from mount which was a uh, marginal decision <coughs> there's that big bitch that big tall piece of shit, Stephen Struve. Now he's a lad. Now he's a big person. I I do hope he uses a jab finally. That'd be nice to see. I just even if he loses, as long as he uses a jab, I will be happy. Now, I'm no expert, but I don't think it'd be a terrible idea if he ended up going to Thailand for a little bit to train with the Thais because I reckon he could benefit quite nicely with um, some very good Muay Thai in there, um, some good collar ties and uh, powerful leg kicks and strength and whatnot. I feel like it would go well because what he's been caught out on has been um, you know, like intercepting knees from too far out. So he abandoned the intercepting knees and just a knee from the clinch and if someone got close to his elbows and, uh, and, and knees uh, up close but at the range was teeps and uh, long straights and uh, big roundhouse kicks. I reckon you do quite well, but uh, no, what do I know? Actually, what do I don't know? I said like I'm some expert, which I'm not. But the, the key, actually, the one thing, I don't know if anyone sleeps on, but uh, everyone's like, Stephen Struve, look at this big bitch. Why is he using his range? The real thing that's Stephen Struve is uh, the grappling. His jujitsu is actually really good and his most recent win he got an arm triangle he's also triangle pat barry um jujitsu phenomenal uh, he should go back to that also even crazy is the fact he doesn't have the longest reach in the ufc that john jones has the longest reach in the ufc which is just ridiculous Bruce Buffy given the announcements.
to go to Thailand, Bruce Buffett announced uh, Jim was through with a Muay Thai fighter, so he might have some Muay Thai, he probably does have some Muay Thai in his belt, but I just feel like he hasn't used it as much as I feel like he could, or should. Because really, Stephen Stroop should be listening to me. Here we go, beginning of the first round, Jason Herzog, our referee today. Stephen Stroop looks wide, he looks got big shoulders at the moment, got big, got big wide, wide chest and back. Okay, I'm in the first round, a touch of gloves, uh, 4, 56, 55. Before Simmons Drew opens with a uh, body kick straight away, a, a jumping side kick to the body, and a now snap kick, uh, teep up the middle. See how he uses his range to uh, keep Tui Vice off him because Tui Vice, I suspect, will throw an overhand and then uh, fall into the clinch like he normally does. Jab feints from uh, Tui Vice looks tremendously undersized against Drew for Drew backing into the cage, uh, throws a head kick uh, too far out. Body kick there, overhand for Tui Vasa, doesn't quite land. Simsu brings his head forward and uh, he just goes behind him. It's true, there feints here. Lead kick from Tui Vasa. Tui Vasa throws a jab, come in, powerful lead kick from Tui Vasa there. Feints the uh, overhand, that was a lead kick, very nice. Teep again from Strew, just a little one. Overhand again, crashes into the clinch, Tui Vasa does. Shoots for a takedown, Tui Vasa does. In the clinch now, body strikes, strong, a deep, deep, deep overhook for Struve. And good head position for Tui Vasa. Got a nice clamp with uh, Struve's left hand over uh, Tui Vasa's right hand. Tui Vasa unable to free that hand. Good strong clinch position. Uh, we probably won't see the normal elbows Tui Vasa likes to throw from the clinch because of the high difference. But unfortunately, because that's one of his best weapons. Some of the knees, oh, powerful hook in there. Struve attempts to do a wee Uchimaru throw, unable to do it. Powerful body shots for Tui Vasa there. Good head position, pokes his super Struve's head straight up in the air. Body shots again. Oh, Struve though, wrapping up a gear team. Probably hasn't quite got it. No, good hit position again for Tui Vasa. Pushes on the face of, of uh, Struve there. Looks like he threw a knee. Couldn't quite see from the angle. Backs away. Oh, overhand right. Just misses from uh, Tui Vasa. Next is Chin. Lead kick from Tui Vasa. Lead kick again from Tui Vasa, just, just misses. Tui Vasa looking sharp, Struve looking hesitant. Good, powerful lead kick from Struve there. Struve with his chances, probably to throw a kick, switches back again. Oh! Steps ready laboured, but then throws a head kick that goes all the way over the guard of Tui Vasa, hits him right behind the ear. Tui Vasa shrugs it off though. Overhand right, right to the clinch, uh, Tui Vasa does. Deep uh, overhook for Struve again, uh, and Tui Vasa throws nice body shots. Double underhooks for Tui Vasa. Uh, loses it, no, back to it now. Switches the hand position, starts throwing, starts throwing body shots again with the left hand. Knees to the leg. Oh, beautiful elbow there on the break for um, Tui Vasa. Tui Vasa looking sharp with one minute three left in, in the first round. Beautiful leg again from Tui Vasa. Tui Vasa bobbing away and coming in. Powerful leg kick again. Powerful leg kick return from Struve. And returned again from Tui Vasa. Lead kick lands again from Struve. Struve throws a strike to return, doesn't land. Uh, Teep from Struve now.
Good body kick from uh, Struve there. Struve, I suppose, a lead kick. Tip again from uh, to, uh, uh, Struve. Powerful leak, powerful leak, stumbles through for that one. Some through, uh, stumbles through. Seven through, surfing on the cage now. Legs look, not having fun. Overhand rights multiple for um, Tuvasa. Unloading on the fence, unable to connect on many of them, but then posts his forearm on Struve's legs and pushes him against the cage. Pushes him to the ground, but he's nothing. Lands for Struve covering up now. Tuvasa pouring it on. Uppercut, 10 seconds left on the ground. He drops him. That's it, that's in the first round. Toy Vasa does it, knocks him out first round, climbs onto the cage, sets up the above Struve. Wow. Wow. Beautiful work. And then he's going to get a bloody shoe to do a shoey. He's yelling out for a beer. Yelling out for a beer to do a shoey in the cage with his mate's shoe. What an absolute lad. Well done, Tai Butuivasa. Let's have a look at the finishing combination. So he throws a lead kick that causes Struve to stumble, and then on the cage, throws an overhand over Struve's um, deep overhook and stumbles Struve. Then it unloads on him, his hooks to the head, to the body. I love his body work, just throwing beautiful body hooks, and then the uppercut and just clips through right in the forehead, drops him three seconds in the first round. Here it is here, Struve covering up, a jab, body hook, and then boom, throws a massive uppercut, hits Struve right on the top of the head, drops him. Well done, Toy Vasa, beautiful win. Unfortunately, I do think this might be the end of Stephen Struve. And then jumped on top of the cage above Struve's bleeding corpse and was like, give me a fucking beer and a shoe. What a top lad. Fuck it out. Clinch work for Dwee Vasa here, look really good. Well, it's reckless. Strong clinch. Good on him. <coughs> Sorry, I just coughed into the mic. I do hope someone has a beer so we can see Tui Vasa do a um I show you before he leaves. Oh well. It's true Valad, go around checking everyone's hands. Time for the official announcement. Struve and two of us are hugging, and Struve like pats him on the head like a small child. One second left in the round. Two of us are lad, giving props to Struve for his baby. I'm going to get something to eat. I'll be back shortly.
going from a uh, UFC uh, chant with me thing to a what I call mukbang, whatever. I want to eat some food. can beat him. What exactly does he look like? I possess the power to turn his lights off, and I believe I will. For every unparalleled run of dominance, but there's, some liars and cowards in here. there's an impossible counterpart who instills a different kind of terror. An action reel of violent encounters forever in pursuit, advancing like a buzzsaw, pushing like a berserker, intent on breaking everything in his path, including that put your hands which to this point can't be broken. Get your hands up. How Something's gotta give. As a pound-for-pound pound juggernaut and the most dominant champion in UFC history, confronts the beast himself, a high-flying, relentless force of nature who won't be stopped. Big right from Gaethje, Justin Gaethje! Until he's turned the fight world upside down. Tonight, as the UFC finishes up an historic slate of events from Fight Island in Abu Dhabi, the lightweight title is on the line as the UFC's most dominant champion oh! meets the most exhilarating thriller in the sport. It all goes down in the new fight capital of the world. On the sands of Myaz Island in Abu Dhabi, it is UFC Fight Island. It is champion versus champion. This is UFC 254. Nurmagomedov versus Gaethje. And it starts right now. Dateline Abu Dhabi. It has been a most memorable five-week stretch for the UFC here on Fight Island. And it officially hits its climax tonight. The two best lightweight fighters in the world engaged in this historic 
stylistically fascinating matchup that will determine the undisputed champion at 155 pounds. Live from the Flash Forum here on UFC Fight Island in Abu Dhabi, this is UFC 254, Khabib versus Gaethje. Closed captioning is available for tonight's telecast and is also available in Spanish at UFCEspanol.com. Tonight's broadcast is presented in high definition by Manscaped.com. And the all-new nose and ear hair trimmer. Purchase one today and get free shipping at manscaped.com. And with all of that, thank you so much for being with us for UFC 254. I'm John Anik. So 28-0 seems an impossibility in modern-day mixed martial arts, but that is the body of work that UFC lightweight champion Khabib Nurmagomedov has put on paper. Quite the legacy, perhaps only trumped by that of his late father, Abdulmanop, who made a lasting imprint on not just his son, but legions of fighters before his passing earlier this year. But of course, Khabib, true to form, is focused on the task at hand. And that would be wise, because that would be Mr. Highlight, Justin Gaethje, a man with no point of comparison for any other fighter on this roster, as skilled and determined as he is entertaining. And tonight, this self-believing American will try to do what no man before him has been able to do. With all of that, we welcome in the UFC legend, Daniel Cormier. I mean, goosebumps, you got goosebumps tonight or what? I mean, goosebumps don't even describe how I'm feeling right now, but I'm an adult. This feeling is across the board. I got a six-year-old buddy named Liam that canceled his birthday party to watch the fights tonight. So Liam, happy birthday. And as the interim champion would say, enjoy the carnage. It's going to be a <laughs> fantastic night. I cannot wait for these fights to start. And how about Liam getting a shout out in front of millions of people? Just <laughs> incredible, but big picture for years. This is your teammate, Khabib Nurmagomedov. You have trained alongside him. And this is a unique puzzle that oh. no one has been able to solve thus far. I mean, 28, no. People generally make mistakes early in their careers. Habib has not made a mistake. He has dominated and only gotten more dominant as his career has gone on. He's always been able to wrestle, but now he's got the striking to match. He also has fantastic grappling and a killer's instinct when it comes to finishing fights. This title run has been, I mean, it's been a finish after finish after finish. Thus Poirier, Conor McGregor, a laundry list of fantastic fighters that he puts away. And he makes his third defense tonight against the interim champion, Justin Gaethje. For my money, this is a legend in his own right. I mean, Justin Gaethje came across the world with the American flag draped around his shoulders and said that I am here to get the job done. And everybody across over in USA are saying, USA, USA, let's go highlight Justin Gaethje has tremendous skill, an all-American wrestler, an unwavering belief that he is the guy to beat Habib Nurmagomedov. He does not think for one second he is outmanned, and he intends to get his hand raised and the full lightweight championship wrapped around his waist. And here was the scene, of course, DC, at the Flash Forum on Friday. A lot of mutual respect between these two combatants, as you might expect. All right, these fight odds are brought to you by DraftKings. Play in free UFC 254 pools on DraftKings for your shot at over $10,000 in prizes. Don't wait. Download the app and use code UFC when you sign up. DraftKings, you can bet on it. It's so only once in 12 UFC fights coming in has Khabib Nurmagomedov closed as a betting underdog. He's been about a 3-1 to one favorite, now 3.5-1 to one as we lead it up to UFC 254. All right, co-headliner tonight is a true middleweight title eliminator, the former UFC middleweight champion, Robert Whitaker, taking on the oncoming American, Jared Cannon Cannoneer. I mean, Jared Cannoneer, Robert Whitaker is a fantastic fight, but when we talk about the Reaper, when we talk about a guy that held the middleweight championship for a long time, you talk about a guy that is war tested. He's war tested. He has been in there with the best fighters in the world. He said he needed time away. And if you see when he fought Darren Till, that time away has brought you back a rejuvenated Robert Whitaker, a guy that is using all of his skill now. He has been through the fire. He has seen the mountaintop. Now he is trying to work his way back up there and feels a win tonight puts him right back in position to fight for that belt again. So Whitaker's 9-1 at 185 pounds. Cannoneer has never lost as a middleweight. Your thoughts on him in this spot tonight? People talk about this guy has heavyweight power. Well, guess what? Jared Cannoneer does have it. He was a heavyweight and scored knockouts up there. And since he's gotten to 185, he seems to have found the optimal weight division. He is able to do all and everything inside of the octagon. He wrestles, he strikes, he defends takedowns. He is fighting people his weight. And the one thing about Jared Cannoneer, it's a level of focus that I have not seen right. from a contender in a real long time. And he feels like tonight he will not only beat Robert Whitaker, but dominate him and get the title shot that he so desperately wants. Essentially a pick -em fight according to the the odds makers will see who has the upper hand in the co-main event Whitaker and Cannoneer 
we're fired up if you can't tell folks the wait ends here one of the biggest pay-per-views of the year here's a look right we're back i just um just watched the way ins as well just briefly then um how the fuck does whitaker look bigger than cannonier just out of curiosity whitaker looks huge I was going to find a photo of it, I was going to put it up for a second. Alright, let's see if we can find a photo of them in their weigh-ins because they're big. Nah, surely the UFC Instagram page will have it, surely. See if, oh, hold on, see if I can put this up for a second. Shh. Um. Okay, look at this. Um, transition. Look at this. How the fuck? Israel Whitaker, bigger than fucking Jerry Cannonier. That is ridiculous. Former welterweight versus former heavyweight, and the welterweight is bigger. I'll be interested to see what they look like today, and, and they screw up each other. Because that is ridiculous. Oh, Jesus, why is it so... Oh, that's all good. Whack, whack, whack. Right. Hopefully my um my underdog fight picks come up nicely. I'd like to get a hundred five hundred dollars off a one dollar bet, but I need um Ian Kujalaba to win, which is not going to happen. Well, I might. It'd be nice though. I've abandoned the whiskey for um a chai latte now, so that's fun. Cause I'm not like most other girls. <clears throat> yeah, here we go. Watching the old. Ion Kutlaba fight Margaret Vichy Popper Demon Lena that punched clean and Kutlaba was just like rope doping he was just playing that, that, that funky possum and then um, the uh, ref was all up in there and then he, saw, he threw a punch back and he sold it marginal move marginal move understandable but hey it is what it is but Ion Kutlaba's a bit of a piece of shit he was he got covered twice and was just like nah just walk around so I'm telling you right now, if it goes past the first round, Kuzlav is getting stopped. <sighs> and Kalaev, massive favourite though. Jesus. Minus 335 favourite. We love a plus 250 underdog. Big difference there, but that's okay. Alright, here it is. Here's the uh, announcement, or the, the promo for it. It'll be fun. Yeah, the lucky weight division needs some, needs some new blood as well. They are looking pretty poor. <laughs> and Kalev fucked up poor Craig for 14 minutes and 55 seconds, then got triangled. That's so poor form. Good love has been around for ages. Mm. 
he fought in Auckland a few years ago, and we went and watched it, and um, well, I went and watched this rather, and uh, it was insane. He was uh, it lit the arena up because he was just putting the pressure on this dude, and he like walked up to him when the fight was announced, and I did a full like, it was fucking cool. It was fucking cool. Come on now, it's looking big. He always looks big though. I was a big fan of uh, Kelly Roundtree when he fought um, <sighs> when he fought Ian Kuzlava but Ian Kuzlava ran through him just ran through him which made me sad but it is what it is I expect him not to rope it over this time around though. I, 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 for his sake, I hope he has a very serious face on and uh, fucking plays properly. Oh yeah, he fucking threw two illegal knees against um, Glover Deshiro and they didn't quite land. But like, come on man. Cut it out. Yeah, here comes Magomed Ankalaev. Scary individual. I haven't watched too much of him, but I'm going to start watching him more now. Ranked 11 in the world? Hmm. What does Apology rank him as? I don't know his name. Magomed. Mega Meg and Kalive. <laughs> oh no, he's there, he's ranked number 11th. Bellator's uh, light heavyweight champion uh, uh, Vadim Nemkov is uh, not looking too flash in the rankings. Everyone was uh, hyping him up, but uh, rank number twenty on Tapology. I do think he's probably better than Paul Craig and OSP and Kuchilaba and Shogun. <gasps> but it's just Bellator, so. Where would the and Tokyo Sun is a funny surely. That should be fun. I like the sound of that. Because last time was cancelled. Oh, look, someone's in the chat. How's it going? You're going to come join us now. Oswaldo Mendes. You're going to come hang out and watch the fights and hear me talk shit about them. Ah. Both fighters make weight. Mega Man Clive, two inches taller, two years older, but both have the same reach. Bruce Will's coming up now. We're doing the announcements. Fight Island in Abu Dhabi for UFC 254. Khabib versus Gaethje. And now, this fight is three rounds in the UFC Light Heavyweight Division. Introducing first... Fighting out of the blue corner, a combat sambo What's fighter, up, holding a professional Sops. record, 15 wins, 5 losses, 1 no contest. He stands 6 feet 1 inch tall, weighing in at 205 and 1 half pounds. Fighting out of Chisinau, Republic of Moldova, E1, the home. Here is the classic, the classic uh, throat cut as he goes across the cage. 
And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, a mixed martial artist holding professional record, 13 wins, the last time one came loss. Out and was like he stands six feet three and, inches uh, tall, <laughs> weighing in at 205 and one half pounds, like fighting out of Mahatkala, Russia, Magomed Agala. Radio, first round. Okay, here we go. Start the first round. Four, fifty-seven, fifty-six, fifty-five. Ankulaev is circling round, putting the pressure on straight away. Circling to Ankulaev's right. Uh, Kuzlava coming out, Alphadox and Kalaev southpaw. Merely lead kick for Kuzlava. Oblique kick rather. Front stamp out of the middle, doesn't land. Strong lead lead kick for Ankalaev. Merely calls Kuzlava to stop on his tracks. Circling towards the right and Ankalaev circling towards his left, just going in circles in the centre of the cage. Already going along in the first fight. On a single punch thrown. Feints from Ankalaev. Ankalaev, a lot of head movement at the moment. Not throwing anything back though. Oh, front head kick. Uh, snap up the middle. Just catches it with on the chin. Eats it. And uh, carries on coming forward. The front uh, snap kick, the same one that knocked out. I um, uh, can't remember the guy's name. The black fella that he knocked out. Ian Kuzlava throws a straight, nothing to it. And Kalev tries to counter him with a check hook. Powerful kick from uh, Ankalaev takes out the lead leg of uh, Kuzlava. Kuzlava hits him with an overhand right at the same time. Powerful strikes on both ends. Lead kick again for Kuzlava. Still circling, still doing laps, pressing on the thing. Straight from Kuzlava. Just clips and Clive. Oh, straight again from Kuzlava lands. Strong body kick from and Clive lands to Kuzlava. Oblique again. Check hook from Eon. Pushing forward, Kuzlava is touching the lead hand, throwing jabs. Throws a straight behind it. Kuch, um, Ankalaev comes back with three punch combination. Nothing to it. Overhand right for Ankalaev. Spins Kuzlava around. Kuzlava still pushing forward. Ankalaev circling the same. Still doing laps in the center of the cage. Front teep kick from Kuzlava. Ankalaev doesn't really flinch from it. Check hook from Ankalaev. Just clips Kuzlava. He replies with a uppercut. 223 left in the round. Combination from Kuzlava on the miss. Go oh, top collar clinch for Ankalaev. Lands a good knee to the ribs. Spins him round. Kuzlava does back to the fence. Come back to the center cage now. Double jab. Kuzlava. Pumping out the jab, loose jab, nothing really on it, just to come in, something to keep him thinking. Same again, Kuzlava tries to counter with a, um, sorry, Ankalaev tries to counter with a check hook, just loosely. We're pumping out the, that um, jab straight from Ankalaev down the middle, just lands. Kuzlava still circling the same way, but just doing laps. He needs to start moving towards his right and cut Ankalaev off. But he's not doing that, walks towards his power hand. Throwing punches forward, Ankle Live just keeps checking in with that check hook over and over again. Oh, again, misses that time. Kuzlava returns with the left hook. Oh! Strip Ankle Live drops Kuzlava coming forward, head kick blocks by Ankle Live. Kuzlava put on his butt for a second, still coming forward though. Straight down the pipe for Ankle Live there. Up on this round from that there, one minute left in the round. Kuzlava looks like he goes, what's around him? Little mouse under the eye of Ankalaeva looks like. Or a little marking. 
Oh, oh, he's out, he's out, he's out, he's out. That's it. And Goliath. Oh, no, he's still fighting. No, he's out. Oh! And Goliath catches him. Powerful, powerful right hook. Sets him down. Could have stopped the right then and there. Kutalaba covers up. And Goliath puts the pressure on. Kutalaba's hands drop and puts him to sleep. Powerful performance by Ankoliev. Beautiful performance. He is now a prospect. Someone talked about the light heavyweight division. Lightweight heavyweight division. That top 10 needs to watch out. Powerful move. There goes my $500. Straight right, uh, left down the pipe. And it turns him round. That was the first one. Kutalaba tries to throw like a, like a backhand. And Ankoliev just spanks him with that left hand. Wow. Put him to sleep. Throws a backhand. Ankoliev. Lead right hook. Left hook combination. Ian Kutalaba. Doesn't know where he's at. Powerful, powerful performance. Well done, Ankoliev. A definitive statement on that rivalry after the uh, lackluster... Uh, previous fight and there you go show of respect between them good good performance um good showcase well done well i put one dollar on all the underdogs to win and that was a waste of time that was Beautiful knockout. He's a big unit as well. He's a big boy. The amount of finishes we've had this fine guys been very good. Quick look at the rankings again the Hawaii Heavyweight Division. Um, to be honest, after that performance, he could probably throw himself in against Dominic Reyes. Really? He's ranked number 11. Uh, Johnny Walker, Nikita Krylov, Vulcan Uzdemir. Oh, that new guy who knocked out Uzdemir. What's his name? Jury. I'm going to butcher this. Pro. Projects, Projaska, Projaska, I think. How do you pronounce his name? That's probably a good fight, actually, because he came in and knocked out Uzdemir and has just jumped his way into number six without actually, you know, proving himself or whatever. That would be a good fight. I reckon that. He won't call anyone out, but he should. No, very nice. In, in Kutalaba. This thing's just fucked down. You probably fight Paul Craig. Or Ed Herman. You need to give him another gimme one now. You need to give him someone like John Vellante or Sam Alvey or something. You need to give him Sam Alvey. That'd be fun. Here's a replay again. So Kutalaba throws a jab and then a, then a left hook. And then a back fist with the left hand as well. So not a spinning back fist, just a back fist. And uh, Ankle has a, a, what, a 4-3? Uh, a Boom. Throw a 3-4, and then just... Pfft. Hammer fist. Soon as hands go, Kutalaba to sleep. Wow, wow, wow! This nasty, nasty power.
top two better watch out. Dana White's contender series is coming back. I'll honestly say I've never watched a full season of that. I've only watched the highlights. Because I don't care. Throwing like heavyweights in there though, because they know they don't have any. Oh, Carlos Oberg, he's a New Zealander. Hold on, let me look him out real quick. Oh shit! We got another New Zealander coming in. Top lad. Now this is Laura Murphy's fight. I like Laura Murphy enough. She's been on the UFC for a long time, and she's fighting this woman on a uh, what a, a week's less than a week's notice, more than a week's notice, pretty much a week's notice. So um, I feel she will. Uh, yeah, I should probably run through this woman. Because now I don't care about my underdog beer because Kutala fucked that up for me, so. Nah. Not impressed. Okay, they're talking about fucking betting. I only talk about betting, I'm always sad because my bets are losing. Alright, let's have another quick look at this, this card. We have this one, and then we have the one I don't know anything about. And then we have Volko vs. Harry, which will be fun. Laura would be better win this. I, put, I think I put $2 on her. I need to give me my money back. Oh, fights. We had one, two, three, four, we had five finishes. It's not been a bad day of fight so far. Oh, I saw the UFC's Instagram page. Um, Toy Buster managed to do a shilly. Good on him. What a freak. Love it though. Good on him. And then his mate did one too. Good on him. This is gonna be over surely if they keep fucking doing it as quickly as they are. Show you from Tattoo Vasa. Man, he runs. <laughs> terrible stoppage. Someone commented on the Instagram <laughs> terrible stoppage. Kutlov wasn't really knocked out. He was, he was just rope a on the ground. Yeah, and Mega Man Collab's gonna be a star. Oh wow, 
Maybe going for life has the um, the longest active win streak in uh, Labor Weight at the moment. More than Yarn. Wow. <laughs> the longest is him and Kalaev, and then it goes uh, Jan Blahovic and Glover to share with, th with four. And he goes, fucking eat him. It's fucking ridiculous. That's amazing. Yeah. Laura Murphy, been around for way longer than I thought she had been. Terrible haircut for Lilia. I'm gonna call it Lilia as well, I'm not gonna call her by last name because it is too hard to pronounce. It's from his biggest sound too. God, it's so awkward watching the fucking fight cams. Jesus Christ. Oh, uh, Laura Murphy's adorable. I hope she wins. She'll be the fucking one. Who was the number one contender? It's that, it's that uh, Brazilian chick who, um, who tamped down Joanne Calderwood, isn't it? Um, look at her video. It's like, it's Jennifer Meyer, is it? Hold on, let me have a look. What woman's... I want woman's flyweight. Mm. What am I looking for? Woman's flyweight. Yeah, Jennifer Meyer. Man. Joanne Cole would have fucked that up, didn't she? By fighting Jennifer Meyer. I rate it, but fuck. I'll suppose Jennifer Meyer, that'll be um, Andrage, won't it? She'll be fighting next, because she'd just take care of Kellen Chuchagin. Kellen Chuchagin. Yeah, she's going to be next. I would say after this fight, Laura Murphy needs to fight Calvillo. No matter what. Yeah, so I would say, so you have Shevchenko versus Maya. Shevchenko will probably beat Maya, and then you have Andrade versus Shevchenko, and then you have Lauren Murphy versus Cynthia Calvillo. Easy. Oh, Joan Cole is fighting Jessica I. I don't know that. That's nice. Oh, Joan Cole wins. She's also amazing, and I love her. Wrestling master of sport is uh, come up before underneath her name. What does it even mean? What does that mean? Wrestling master of sport doesn't even sound like proper English. Right, she's coming in. She's coming like a huge upset in this division here. And I'm, you know what? I'm excited. I'm excited to see what she can do. Here she comes, straight American. So I'm put a three grand bet on Magomed and Kalaev, Alexander Volkov and Lauren, Lauren Murphy. It's a decent bet.
you see the video of um, her? <laughs> <laughs> on her on the Ultimate Fighter? When she like told um, Eddie Alvarez she was going to change teams. And you like, spat the dummy. And then... And then like stormed into her like the teammate's room and was like, Oh, she's leaving. But is her name wrong? Her like, name's fucking Lauren. Eddie Alvarez, you muppet. Alright, here we go, Bruce Buffer, about to do the announcements. Yeah, I'll put the audio on for the announcement. Shocky Robot 29 as of today. Murphy is taller by an inch. Both fighters coming in right at that 126 pound limit. Two and a half inch reach advantage resides in the red corner with Lauren Murphy. All right, now for the introductions. Back inside of Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC flyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a mixed martial artist holding professional record. Eight wins, one loss. She stands five feet four inches tall, weighing in at 126 pounds. Fighting out of Tashkent, Uzbekistan, Lilia Shakirova. And now introducing her opponent, Fighting out of the red corner, a mixed martial artist holding professional record. 13 wins, four losses. She stands five feet five inches tall, weighing in at 126 pounds. Fighting out of Houston, Texas, USA, presenting the number five ranked flyweight contender in the world, Lucky Lauren Murphy. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Lucas Basaki. All right, let's do this thing. Send link. I'm watching it. I'm, I bought the pay-per-view. I'm sorry, my friend. Sorry, honey. Okay, fight started. Round one. 4.56.5.54. Laura Murphy coming forward. God, I don't know how to say that girl's name. Shakarova. I'll say that. Shakarova circling well. Uh, circling away back to the center of the cage now. Lauren Murphy keeping her distance. Lear kick missed for Shakarova. Switching stances back and forth. Lauren Murphy coming forward. Low stance. Speak to shot from her shortly. Shakarova. Circles well. Laura Murphy throws a check hook and misses it. Leak kick again for Shakarova. Bouncing back and forth. Body kick, nothing on it from Shakarova. Laura Murphy is waiting for a moment to strike. Oh, nice one too from her as uh, Shakarova dips her head down. Combination for both fighters there. Yeah. Oh, good body kick from Laura Murphy stepping in as uh, Shakarova circled away to her left, to her right. Shakarova still bouncing around back and forth. Laura Murphy strikes aren't really landing on the target. They just throw them out there, but they're not. There's not enough pop on them to get them to where they need to be. Too much in between the girls. Good lead leg kick for Shakarova and head kick blocked from Laura Murphy. Oh, spinning backfist from Shakarova. Hit clips. Laura Murphy straight on the top of the head. Laura Murphy tentative. Leak again. Combination from Laura Murphy. Shakarova flees away. Good combination. Very low single from Shakarova. Gets the single. Drops down. Laura Murphy. Powerful knee in the clinch on the, uh, on the uh, stand up. Good shot though for Shakarova, make her think about it. I'm going to be sort of coming forward, she's still moving Shakarova, she's moving quite well. Good quick jab 
A little bit slow, but a powerful right hand there as your back chakra over to the fence. You do more of that, back it all the way to the fence rather than this uh, uh, halfway there when uh, Lorimer will be standing just on the uh, inside of that black uh, ring in the center of the octagon. And chakra over can just circle around and just bounce, 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 bounce. Lorimer, oh, and she dips her head really low as well. Chakra throws her punches and is like bent over the hips and is throwing from there. And, and Laura Moon noticed it. She did it. Then she um, she threw a knee up in preparation for it to duck down. So she sees it. I would yeah, jab, jab, jab from Laura Murphy. Laura Murphy, sorry, Lauren Murphy. Oh, one, two from her lands on the button. Looks strong. Shake her over, fainting though. Does it again? She bends over so far. Oh, nearly pulled out a titty. That's okay. Chakra over, still circling, bouncing around, body kick from her, just soft one, spinning back kick, nothing on it. Lauren Murphy fainting, fainting the jab and the uppercut. Try to throw a body kick too far away from her though. Return from Chakra over. On the cage, Chakra over is, Lauren Murphy's right there. Single leg again from Shakarova. Ryan, she's deep. She might get this. She lifts it up high. Laura Murphy defending well. Pushes her to the fence. Murphy with her back to the fence. Elbows. Powerful elbows. Shakarova. Shakarova grabs the other leg. She's got the double leg. Switches now to a boy lock. Laura, Laura Murphy, Murphy with a uh, deep, deep, deep overhook. Lands a good knee um, as she controls Shakarova's wrists. 30 seconds left in the round. Laura uh, Murphy digs on hook. Shakarova tries to throw her over. Not strong enough. Laura Murphy tries to pick her up. Spins her against the cage. Looks strong. Murphy looks strong. Pushes her against the cage. When she's pushes it, she's a throw. When she's on the cage, usually she's a throw, but she just stands there and waits for opportunity. She seems left. Good first round. We'll probably have to give it to Murphy for that one. I think. I just a pressure. Oh, I'm not sure actually. I'm not sure. I'm actually. I'm gonna. I'm gonna retract that. I'm gonna give it to Shakarova actually. The activity was too much. The shoots. The shots on the single leg. No, she looked good. Saying to Boy Lock or Murphy. Oh man. It's currently 7.45 in the morning. Shake a rover's corner saying for the move more. I think it's very. I also think it's good to like throw punches when you're not bent over in half. But we'll see how she takes it. Murphy not even breathing heavy. Murphy already coming forward. Shaker over on her bike, bouncing around, bouncing back and forth. One two from Murphy, nowhere near. Jam from Shaker over wasn't nowhere near. Fainting and then head kick from Murphy just next to her. Murphy needs to get her to the cage. Check hook from uh, Shaker Rover doesn't, doesn't land. Front kick from Murphy, very nice. Head kick from Shaker Rover returned, blocked by Murphy though. There you go, Shaker Rover's getting onto the cage, Murphy. Circles out of it quite nicely. Maybe trying to push her back, but it's not not right. Not cage kind of too flashy. Just kind of circling a little bit. Jazz from Shaker over. Yeah, you know, one yeah combination from Murphy there. There you go. Shaker over's back is on the cage now, and Murphy can't unload, and she does, and lands combinations. Oh, one two from Shaker over. Oh, she's once again on the cage. 
body kick from Shaq, uh, from Murphy and good knees in the clinch. Almost got the collar tie on there. Shaq for our moving away, side kicks. Murphy's coming in again. Shaq just back straight back. He goes circles at the last possible moment. That's where Murphy needs to cut the cage. Staring, staring, looking at each other in the mirror. Check her over, throwing back these uh, looping punches from when she's stationary. It's not looking good for her there in that position. I don't know if he steps off with a jab and tries to throw the high kick behind it. Good knees the body. Uppercut's very nice, and this is in the clinch rather. Double underhook. One on yeah, double underhook for Murphy. Oh, it just drags her to the ground. Doesn't even doesn't have to lift or anything, just drags her straight down. This is where I feel like Murphy will work better. Good elbow from full guard. Open guard now. Murphy should look to pass. Stacks her. Oh no, Shakarova underhooks her leg. So she's in full guard now with an underhook leg. Murphy puts her weight on it. She now just traps her arm. Sorry, my towel just fell off. I gave me a fright. Shakarova. Massive open guard. Murphy get around it so easy. Feeling the hips. Murphy. There you go, Murphy passes. Shakarova goes up the back. One hook in, two hooks in, Murphy both hooks in. Ryan to make a choke, that's it. She's got one hand in. Oh, Shakarova's pulling out, pull it, peeling, peeling down the hands. She's got it. That's it, that's it, that's over. Right there, Ryan to choke, finish. Oh, she's tough though, there it is, there it is. Well done, Lauren Murphy. Beautiful Ryan to choke, the moment hits the ground, she does in a whole different world. Lauren Murphy. Congratulations, another submission. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful work. Or, instead of doing Andrade for the title after Jessica Meyer, Jennifer Meyer rather, Lauren Murphy versus Jessica Andrade. That's the fight to make. Yeah, body lock, takedown. The moment Shakaraba, Shakaraba, what's her name? I already forgot her name. <laughs> she just gives her back. And uh, Murphy right in there. Running a choke. Hold it in there. Slides the hand behind the head. And that's it. She's toughed it out for a long time, but... No, that is, that is deep. That is deep. Well done, Murphy. For that, I'll have a sip of my very average whiskey. Shakaroba could have um could have a good future though. He's working on striking a little bit. Had some good moments, but looks terribly undersized. Should probably go destroy it. There you go. Murphy made my money back. Oh yeah, I'll put on the audio for that, eh? Number two, declaring the winner by submission due to a rear naked choke, Lucky Lauren Murphy! Yeah! All right, here with your winner, Lauren Murphy, and if this has not been the biggest and best week of your professional life, I don't know what would top it. You said on the bus to the hotel you wanted your first career win by submission, and you're able to choke her out. Congratulations. How do you feel? I feel amazing. This has been one of the best weeks of my life. I want to thank the UFC from the bottom of my heart, uh, the W Hotel in Abu Dhabi, to get my first submission win in the jiu-jitsu capital of the world just tops everything off this week. Man, thank you for everything. Thank you. Very nicely said there. Oh, so you show up in Las Vegas expecting that you're going to travel here and fight Cynthia Alcalvio. In steps Lilia Shakirova. What was your mentality when, when Cynthia fell out and you knew you were going to get a new, stylistically somewhat different challenge? 
And as soon as we found out, I told Mick, I'll fight anybody. I'm one of the most well-rounded fighters, not just in this division, but in the UFC. I can do it all. I can wrestle, I can grapple, I can strike. I can, I can do it all. Good I'm well-rounded, I'm tough, I'm mean. I have two finishes in my last four fights. I'm on a four-fight win streak. It's longer than anybody has in this division, especially over ranked opponents. I have fought all ranked opponents since this division opened, and I believe with this yeah, finish here tonight, I've proven I'm opponent. the true well, number one so contender in this ownership. division, and I should be next in line for a title shot. And that's how you cut a promo. There is nothing to add. Congratulations. Safe travels home. Anything else? I want to give a big shout out to Houston, yeah, to so Phoenix, okay. and most of all, to Anchor. Yeah, in a second. by the UFC 3 game, apparently it looks, looks like sh shite. Okay, right, this next fight I don't give a fuck about. I don't know who these people are. But it's my own fault. Hold on, let's have a look at them. Jacob Malkin, ADC 
ABCC Asia 2019 Trials winner, 2019 Pan Pacific Gold Medalist, trains at Rob Whitaker. Oh yeah, he's out of Rob Whitaker's gym. Oh yeah, not very nice. Not very nice. I like that. I like, I like the ADCC Trials winner. I can get behind that. And then who's he fighting? Hawes. Philip Hawes from the Contender Series. Trains, oh yeah, trains with Henry Hooft and that. Michael Chandler and all them. What division is it? What, how much is he weigh? No hives. Bullshit. Middleweight. Oh, it's middleweight. The big boy. And then next week. Oh. What's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing good. Doing good. Who you got? Who you guys got in the coming fights? Let me know. So you'll hear your opinions on it. Anderson Silver needs to retire. I got the promo up of the Hall versus Silver for next week. Silver is done, but it's a probably a favorable matchup for him. Them against Hall, because Hall is super inconsistent at winning, but it has looked good recently. God, everyone says the same thing when they fight Anderson Silver. Like my idols become a rival. I think it's something new to say. The midweight's fun again. Oh, here yeah, right. I was meant to fight you, Romero. That would have been a rough fight. That would have been a rough fight. Your yeah, right, has looked good recently, but tough fight for him. <laughs> the UFC is trying to fill out the pay-per-view with fucking ads because all the fights are getting finished in the first round. Oh, Bryce Mitchell and Andre Phillies next week as well. That's one I'm actually looking forward to. That'll be a good one. And Bobby Green and Tiago Moises. That's a fun one too. Maurice Green and Greg Harley don't give a fuck. Kevin Holland, I like Kevin Holland and Mahmoud Muradov. I don't know who that is, but I like Bryce Mitchell and I like Andre Philly and Bobby Green and Tago Moises and Kevin Holland. Man, they got a whole escort come out for Khabib. A whole ass escort. Yeah, Khabib is arriving really late. He's apparently just arriving now to the to the venue. You know what? Not a good sign. If you're arriving this late. Also, it's definitely not a live look. Is that Jeff Nowinski? Why is he fucking there watching them? He is. Why the f is that Jeff Nowinski? Oh, Habib. Who's next uh, for Khabib after, uh, if he wins tonight? It's got to be Tony. 
they gotta give Tony a win anyone and then let's get the fight again like just make it happen this is ridiculous oh, oh, sorry about the order it's been up since 4 3 30 in the morning Phil Hawes two fights on the contender series let's have a look see what he's looking like big big black dude so he strongly kicks, very strongly kicks. Man, he's pacing this guy's leg up. Oh, slept him with a powerful right hand. Ooh. That is powerful. He can't keep that up over five, over three rounds, though. Yeah, Tico, round one. Yeah, you can't be doing over three rounds. It's too much. But I'll, um, I'll go for this other guy, just because he's Aussie. Jacob Malcone. Massive underdog. Fourth profile. Weird physique, Mukun has. Um, feel free to let me know if you guys have a thought on who you think is going to win between Makun and Horse. Oh, he's super Aussie. Man, he is super Aussie. <laughs> Phil Horse's nickname is Megatron. Oh, it's adorable. It's adorable. Yeah, every time the Whitaker is a good sign. It's because the Whitaker is an animal. Wanna make him uncomfortable? Where's Julian? Did he be Julian Marquez? Jesus Christ, he slept that dude. The next chapter begins for Megatron. Alright, are you walking are you in the walking out yet? Okay, sweet. Phil Hall's walk, walking out now. What's 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 men's middleweight looking like these days? Let's have a little looky looky. Men middleweight. Nah, the top five, top seven there all looks pretty good. Um, Darren Till called out Derek Brunson. That's a good fight. I reckon they should do that one. I don't know if it's anyone's fun. I like that. I like anyone. Marlon Vittori needs a fight. Oh, he's got a fight. This is... Oh, shit. When did that happen? Apparently, Marlon Vittori is fighting Jacare. I like that. I didn't, even, I didn't even hear about that. I like that one a lot. Ian Heinish, Brandon Allen. That's, that's a fun one. Kevin Holland, yep. Man. Middleweight's pretty deep. Middleweight's a pretty deep division, actually. Looking down here, there's some, um, there's some good fighters down here. Alessio De Chirico, 43. Alexander Shlomenko. Cesar Ferris, 45. Oh, there's some good fighters out here. Bevan Lewis. David Brunch is 49. Jesus Christ. David Brunch used to be so good. Wow, that's a lie, isn't it? David used to be so good. He used to be alright. What's next with Calvin Gaslin? That's the real question. Who the fuck does Calvin Gaston fight? Man, tough one. Tough one.
Are you really showing it? I'm re nah, man, I'm not showing it. I'm just having a yarn with it. In case you don't, in case you don't listen to DC talk about it, you can come have a yarn with me about it. We were just hanging out. We were just hanging out. I'm not gonna be showing it on YouTube. We're just cruising. We're just chilling. It's been, it's been a long morning, but we want to see some fights. We're just gonna hang out. UFC debut for this guy. Sorry, Ricky. on the stream just like fucking uh, line it up with this one and we can we can watch it together oh I say that now my internet's not working and that's gonna fuck everything up come on now now so when he wants to be clicking on it so it's not my fault it's fault. Um. yeah my internet's fucking killing it come on man don't do me like this Justin Herzog referee round one is beginning now. Oh, hold on, not yet. Live. Okay, here we go. Round one beginning now. Four fifty six five four three. Very nice. Okay, already Hawes is pressing up on the cage. Malcoon circling directly on the cage though. Looks. Oh, he's already not already clipped already clipped and he's out he's out that's it it's all over it's all over just like that Jesus Christ Hawes knocked him out just swarmed him wow Phil Hawes Megatron is no fucking joke Jesus Christ man Malcoon is still down wow Oh, he feels bad now. Wow, so what happened? On the cage, right hand clip right behind the ear. Malcolm climbs back up and this just swarms him. It's just four unanswered shots and have just put him down. Wow. It was like 15 seconds. Beautiful performance. It's another first round finish. Holy shit. Alexander Volkov, Walt Harris, that's what I'm looking forward to. Man, Malku does not know what's going on. He looks out of it. Here, yeah, look. Put all your arm this bit. <gasps> Sorry, Spurs. UFC. All right, the official decision is brought to you by Guaranteed Rate. You could save massive money on your mortgage with the incredibly low rates from Guaranteed Rate. Act now by visiting rate.com. All right, to make this one official, here's Bruce Buffer.
Ladies and gentlemen, referee Jason Herzog has called a stop to this contest at 18 seconds of the very first round. Declaring the winner by knockout, Philip Megatron Hall. All right, here with your winner, Phil Hawes. This post-fight interview is probably going to be five times as long as the fight. 18 seconds on the knockout, good for the second fastest finish by a middleweight in a debut in UFC history. Congratulations. You belong here. How do you feel about the 18-second fight tonight? Um, I, I feel, I just want to say thank God, of course. I know I'm blessed to be here. I'm blessed for the opportunity to be here at Abu Dhabi with my teammates. We got Dan and everybody and, uh, at Stanford MMA. Um, how do I feel? I feel great. I feel awesome. You are the epitome of calm, cool, and collected. I think anybody who saw you on Dana White's Contender Series and who followed you on the regional circuit knows about your power, but we're going to take a look at it, man, because this is a different show. This is the Ultimate Fighting Championship, and uh, didn't take long. Your thoughts on the finish, young man? Um, it, it was cool. I mean, I just knew I, if I touch, if I land, someone's going to sleep, so I just got to land, just take my time and wait to land, and I landed. I landed, so, yeah. So uh, it was an amazing training camp, I'm sure, but this one only takes 18 seconds as you spin this thing forward and try to continue with the middleweight traction. Your thoughts on what might be next? Uh, I'm healthy, you know. Uh, I head back home next week, so we could probably, when, when's UFC going back to Vegas? Let's do it. Let's, let's get it going. All right, man. Well, you made a major statement in front of millions of people tonight and couldn't be happier for you. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, how about it? Phil Hawes. I mean, Phil Hawes just made the most impressive UFC debut that you can make. You know what, guys? Why not just watch the whole fight again? As Phil Hawes takes pictures, we're going to watch his masterpiece. Fight starts. Hawes takes the center, goes right after Malcoon. Pressure, pressure, a little faint, a little faint. The moment he gets in the range, he explodes in the Malcoon. Right hand lands behind the ear. Boom. And then it's over, right? Now it's just him. And guys, this was Flattened him. Flattened him. Good performance though. Look forward to see what he's doing next. And now everyone is fucking jumping on the stream. And why isn't it silence work? work? Far out. Oh, I look forward to seeing what his, what's him next. Now we've got another 10 minutes of ads because UFC doesn't know how to handle first round finishes. Far out. Oh well, Alexander Volkov. Oh well, we're on the chat. Volkov is his head. Volkov versus Harris, who you guys got? I want Harris to win. I think Harris, well, Harris needs to win. Uh, Volkov is uh, not very fun. Can I S U? What does that mean? Sorry, man. What does S U mean? Um. What was I saying? Sorry, Vol Harris. After the, after the good performance, but not, you know, world class performance against Overeem, where he started off strong, good first round, but then uh, faded a little bit in the second round and they got taken over. It's just, um, it was, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate how it ended. And uh, he needs a good win, and uh, Alexander Volkov will be a good one to get a win. Um, Volkov, good striker, needs to put it together a little bit more, I think, and uh, he could be legit as. Fucked up Vadum though. Fucked up Vadum. And Struve. So, Volkov is good, but, you know, what Harris is just a lad. He's just a lad. He's gone through a lot. He's a lad. Oh, yeah. No division figure. They don't come on up. I see the, the Cody. The Cody fight fell through. That's a good fight. On the list of scary UFC champions, Division Figueredo is probably at the top. Jeez, oh, that red like a choke he hit on fucking um, Joseph Benavides. Mm, this is terrifying. It is terrifying. Yeah, he's... 
<laughs> he's better than Alex Perez. Alex Perez is a bad motherfucker too, but not bad enough. Not bad enough. No, very nice. If, is that Japan? Are you still here, man? I don't know what ECU means. Thought we're hanging out. So the real question is, what's next for um, Phil Hayes? Gary Anders is fighting. Darren Stewart would work. Darren Stewart. Twenty twenty. Shiriko and he's on a bit of a losing streak. Phil Hayes. He's probably gets on quite high actually. Zach Cummings. Yeah, actually, that's a good one. Phil Hayes is that coming, so that's a good one. Brad Tavares hasn't fought in a while. That's probably going for Brad Tavares as well. Oh, I'm still getting okay. They just pull up the UFC 255. Um, oh shit, can I sub? I'm a sub. I'm a child, friends. How up, you wholesome man? Oh man, you make me blush. Yeah, man, jump on, jump on, jump in the gang. Man, I've been up since three thirty. I'm tired as shit. But hey, it's been it's been a good day of fights so far. Actually, it's been really good. I think if I just look at the card real quickly. Oh shit! I think we've had like we've had two decisions. I think. Let me look. If I look at the UFC card real quick. Okay. With prelims, early prelims, first round finish. Sam Alvey, there was a draw. The Oliveira, Oliveira, um, Rachmanov, finish. Woody Kenny, good fight, decision. Two versus Struve, first round finish. And Clive, Chris Laban. First round finish. Murphy, uh, Shakarova, first round finish. Malcoon Horse, first round finish. All these, all these first round finishes, it's been a fucking good day of fights. I, 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 I want to say Walt Harris, first round uh, knockout. Because just, just to keep it going, because it's been good. Sub from. Is that. I don't know what that is, but it sounds gangster, man. Join the sub. This is dope. Welcome. We're hanging out. I was drinking whiskey, but it hurts too much to drink whiskey at five in the morning. But hey, to the three of you guys, the four of you guys that are watching currently, cheers. Ugh, that's nasty. Oh shit, Michael Chandler's in the UFC, that's right. Not a lie, a little bit annoyed. He um is the fucking replacement for, fight for this one. There are so many people in the UFC that probably deserve it more. Is that is he? Is that is the other guy? Oh Jesus Christ! Hey, thanks, man. I am actually stupid and can't read. Sub from sub from is. <laughs> God, I'm fucking dumb. Hey, thanks for helping me out. Michael Chandler, who, who do you give Michael Chandler? Oh, is he, oh, yeah, I'm not seeing you hear him talk. Michael Chandler on this roster, and I'm going to call you a lightweight contender because you were here to back up the main event tonight. I know that fight will not happen, but... What are your impressions on your first UFC Fight Week experience? Absolutely amazing. You know, obviously Fight Week uh, out here in Abu Dhabi has been nothing but amazing. Obviously, I had to come, had to, had to handle business, had to make weight. Um, but it's been awesome. And now here watching the fights, an amazing fights thus far. And I knew I knew taking this opportunity was going to great was going to uh, be awesome anyway. Being able to rub, rub elbows with my new new colleagues here, new co-workers, and I'm excited to be here. I know you and I have talked for years about this eventuality that you would be in the UFC. Why was now the right time? 
I just think certain doors stay closed for certain amounts of time. And all you can do is make the best decision that you can with the information that you have. Um, this just seemed like the right time. Uh, coming off one of the best performances of my life, I think me coming into the UFC right now is the perfect time, and I believe I'm gonna be going to be UFC lightweight champion in the next 12 months. Speaking of that last performance, that first round knockout that you had over a former UFC champion puts you right in line, right? You're standing here as the backup. When you make your Octagon debut, what are you hoping to see that keeps you right where you are right now? You know, I just, I just want to keep doing what I've been doing over the last decade. I want to bite down on the mouthpiece. I want to come across this Octagon and show the fans who I am. Um, I believe I want a top five guy right away. Um, whoever it may be, we shall see. Uh, but I, be, I, I believe I will be knocking on this UFC lightweight door very soon. You know, Chandler, when you look at the skill set in the wrestling, the All-American, the knockout power, the cardio and ability, you seem to match up very well with everybody at the top of the division. Was that a thing that played a big part in you saying right now is the time? And how quickly did you make the decision that it was UFC right now, I'm ready to go? You know, I've been, I've known that I wanted to be here for the last decade, you know, and, and I told Dana that I wasn't not fighting here because I didn't want to. The opportunity just did, didn't necessarily present itself at the right time. Right now is the right time. At my age right now, I, I still feel like a, a spring chicken. I feel, feel extremely young. I feel extremely vibrant. I feel like the best I ever have been. So why not come out here and test it right here at the Ultimate Proving Grounds in the UFC? And uh, I want a top five guy right away. I want to get shot out of a cannon. Uh, either I am who I say I am or I'm not, and we're going to find out pretty darn quick. I mean, look at this guy adding some handsome to this broadcast <laughs> tonight. The win over Benson Henderson was on August 7th. You go right back into another training camp, essentially, in preparation for an opportunity that did not materialize. So realistically, physically, how soon can you actually make that UFC debut? You know, uh, very soon. Obviously, I would love to cool the Jets a little bit. I've been in training camp since March, and I can handle, the body can handle a lot. I yeah. take care of myself. I live I live the right lifestyle for, for this sport of mixed martial arts. Um, I'd like a little bit of time off. It would be nice to enjoy the the uh, you know the holidays with the family, but but we'll see. Opportunity knocks. You got to strike when an iron is hot, and I'm ready to get inside this UFC octagon. I've seen this thing thousands of times yeah. on TV, and it, seen it in person so many times. It's time to get in there. It wasn't just enough when I put on the UFC fight kit to look at the UFC gloves and to look at the UFC fight kit. I want to get inside the cage. I want to prove to everybody in the lightweight division, everybody in the world, the UFC brass, that when I step inside that octagon. I'm coming, um, and I'm going to win the world title. All right, you have certainly earned this opportunity, richly deserving. Thanks for chopping it up with us. We'll uh, we'll see you at the top to quote yeah. you, Michael Chandler, <laughs> like joining us here live on pay per view tonight. All right, these fight odds are brought to you. Right, okay, I'm a quick, I'm a quick gander at the lightweight rankings and see who, see who they think he should go in as. I'll see who the rankings think he's rated at and see who should go in as. Because everyone's like, oh, just go against um, fucking Islam Makachev, which would be gangster. But he won. Because that's too dangerous. Uh, Tapologies down. Okay, UFC lower rankings. Through the word lightweight, okay. Tony Ferguson, great fight. Conor Ruger, great fight. Dan Hooker, great fight. Charles, you know what? You go in anyone. Anyone gives him a good fight in that top 10. Except for LA Quinter and Kevin Lee. They can fuck off. Besides that, everyone else. Paul Felder, that should be a good one. Paul Felder would be a good one. It's probably the highest guy that he could beat, actually, be a, a Paul Felder. Or Gillespie would be fun. Darius should be fun. Fuck, man. This Everyone in lightweight is fantastic. Everyone's fantastic in lightweight, so fuck it, just throw him in, just get him in there. Give Tony someone else. Give Tony. Give. Give Tony. Dariush. He can be Dariush. Okay, what does Topology have him ranked as? They have, where is he? Number 18. So just below Francisco Trinaldo. Fucking Kevin Trinaldo, that'd be fun. Never below, he's better than Hernandez. Do 
Drew Doe, but man, fuck it, everyone, I might like Spain I don't give a shit, just give me anyone. Okay, big, big high hopes for um, Walt Harris now. I um, I want big things for him. I, feel, I, I want him. He did do good things. His uh, performance against um, Alexia Linick, he looked fantastic. His fight against um, Chase Sherman, he looked fantastic. He's a scary motherfucker. He's quick, but I guess he just wasn't there in the um, Oru fight, which is unfortunate, man. It's unfortunate. It's just rough. I'll let, I'll let them talk while I have a fill of water bottle. This matchup tonight, um, but also he's coming into this one in better shape. He's lost 30 pounds. He uh, uh, attributes that to buying a new road bike. He's been a lot more active. He's done a lot in terms of his strength and conditioning because in his last bout, he was just seconds away from getting a major knockout, and he just felt like he was so close, he just needed to take a couple of extra steps, and he would be right there. He is taking those steps and believes that they will pay off tonight, Daniel. Know your history or be doomed to repeat it. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War available November 13th. Yeah, we've never seen Walt Harris look better. More like in tune with himself. More sure that he was prepared. He said he lost 30 pounds over the course of the training camp. He understand what's in front of him. And even looking back on the Overeem fight, he said that he inspired. And that's the one thing that you can strive to do is inspire people. And by making the walk, almost beating Alistair Overeem, he inspired so many under the circumstances and wants to build off. I was going to have lost his last fight because he fucking threw intercepting knees from like ages away against Derek Lewis. Derek Lewis can't handle a body shot, but I don't fucking stand for myself just going to throw intercepting knees, you muppet. Ugh. Jesus Christ. Oh man, everyone's starting to watch the UFC now and my stream is struggling. Come on. Holy shit, his back tattoo's massive. When did that happen? And that little gay manatee, the manatee, stingray for like, ever. Holy shit, turn around. Come on, turn around. It's a whole back tattoo, what is it? Holy <laughs> shit, it's a whole like, Samurai uh, mask, whatever it's called. That was a fucking curveball. Oh, it looks, it looks gangster. I've got him. Scary man now, he's got a big fuck off tattoo. There's a little bit of background noise because I'm just silent the entire time. I just don't want to get copyrighted for no reason. <laughs> it's a massive tattoo. Oh, okay. Wild Harris, here we go. <sighs> Not that much of a reach advantage. I'll let Bruce Buffer do his talking. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC head.
heavyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a freestyle fighter holding a professional record. 13 wins, eight losses, one no contest. He stands six feet five inches tall, weighing in at 254 pounds. Fighting out of Birmingham, Alabama, USA, presenting the number 10 ranked heavyweight contender in the world, Walt the Big Ticket Harris! <laughs> and now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, a mixed martial artist holding professional record, 31 wins, eight losses. He stands six feet seven inches tall, weighing in at 265 pounds, fighting out of Moscow, Russia, presenting the number seven ranked heavyweight contender in the world, Alexander Drago Volkov. And when the action begins. Yeah, okay, here we go. Okay. okay, round one. Starting now. Oscar gonna let you do thing. Okay, round one starting. Round one starting now. Touch your gloves. 457, 56, 55. Okay. Ward Harris on the fence already. Volker pushing forward. One, two. Heat kick from Ward Harris already. Bulk of doing this kind of pressure forward, hands quite low, playing with their lead hand, Walt Harris's body jab from Harris. Playing with the hands, one, two, Volkov returns with three punch combination. Teep to the body from Volkov. Returned from Harris. Combination from Harris, ending with that kick. Lead kick, nice lead kick from Harris. Volkov pouring out with that lead hand, trying to catch Harris's hand. Harris doing the same. Well, Harris, long legs, short torso. Teep to the face, just missed from Well, Harris. Grabbing that lead hand, he is. Oh, oh, oh no, no, my stream is fucking frozen. God damn it. Volkov clipped him with the left hook just as my stream froze. Harris looked like he covered up. Why are you playing this fucking game with me? Okay, now we're good. 335, 334, 33, Okay, Volcom walking around the cage. Cold body chairs from Harris. Oh! He had a kick but caught with the teep from Volkov. Oh! Combination from Volkov. Hit him hard there, coming in, backs up on the cage. Playing with the lead hand again, and my stream is fucked out again. God damn it. This is, this is not having a good time, is it? Okay, 252, 51, 250. Well, Harris still circling around the cage on the outskirts near the cage, near the actual fence. Volko pushing forward, body jab from him, nice powerful body jab. Harris just looks like he's too far out of range. Every time he comes in, Volkov is just far enough away to uh, stop any combination landing. And he's returning with three, four, five punch combinations in there. Most of them are landing. Man. Just did it again. It just froze again. Some bullshit. Okay, we rewind a little bit. We're 230 again. We'll see if this helps. Harris still touching that lead hand. Teep from Volkov. Body kick from Harris. But every time what Harris throws back, Volkov's there throwing a 3 4 5 punch combination. Oof. Both, both fighters are landing though. Well, Harris thought there was an eye poke, but Volkov said he closes fist. Fuck me, oh, my stream has jumped, this is shit. I'm at 310 all of a sudden, sorry guys. I thought I pressed go live. Okay. Sorry, 
150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, Volkov. Touch the lead hand. Volkov's walking forward still. Kicks from all Harris. Looks like he's slowing down already. Volkov not slowing down at all. Fighting his pace. Powerful right hook. Well, Harris needs to get away from the heater kicks and go back to the fundamentals. Lead kicks. Uh, good jabs, maybe some body jabs. Come on, continue. Okay, lead kick from Harris. Point at the hand, still point at the hand. Harris is like walking away and turning his back at the same time. It's not a fantastic look. Harris complaining he got poked. Okay, I've jumped. Oh my god, what the fuck's going on? Okay. My Volker looks sharp. He looks really sharp. Oh. Oh. Harris is hurt. Harris is hurt. Volker pouring it on. Harris covering up against the cage. Volkov is going to punch after punch after punch. Good combinations there. Harris is moving well. Oh, Harris returns with a three punch combination. Lands. Oh, Volkov out of the way though. Beautiful combination with both parties. Ward Harris breathing heavy though. Looking, look at the clock. Teep from Volkov. Right to the body. Harris feeling it. Volkov is coming in and Harris is just covering up. Good knee for Volkov. <clears throat> okay, round one over. Harris complaining about my poke. Did not see it. Cannot comment. <sighs> one round up to Volkov. That is a power. Um, round four, Volkov, he looks sharp. Corner wants him to push forward. Both tapes on, good, on both pies were good. It was a jab, it was not an eye poke, it was a jab. What else to land him? But most of the time it was Volkov. Oh, clipped him hard. It was a knee, fainted the knee, and then landed. Okay, three punch combination, one of which clipped Harris behind the ear. Okay, round two. You got a touch of gloves. Four minutes. 52, 51. Oh, uppercut from what Harris lands as he fakes a tank down. Stan looking to the Volkov, pushing him back a little bit. It's not, not throwing anything yet. What Harris already looking at the clock. Touching to his lead hand. Volkov like holding the wrist. Very nicely. Oh, shoot, shoots up for the takedown. What Harris does doesn't get, doesn't really commit through it. Just kind of goes in to get uh, Volkov thinking about it. Once again, touching that lead hand straight from Harris doesn't quite land. Oh, straight from Volkov. Oh, through to the knee as what Harris teased to shoot him for another takedown. Faints from Ward Harris, shifting the, the hips, we're going to lose him by the kick. 
Oh, hit him perfect body shot. Oh, hit him with it. That's it. Boom. Wow. Alexander Volkov teeped into the body. Kneeled over, keeled over, couldn't handle it, and is still in pain on the ground. As soon as that happened, Volkov poured it on. Beautiful finish. Alexander Volkov, the best he's ever looked. Well done. Wow. Beautiful work. I might have broke a rib. That was beautiful. Walt Harris. Oh, no. Alexander Volkov looked like an animal. He looked amazing tonight. He's talking to DC saying he should run with him. Teep, oh, right in the solar plexus. Perfectly in the solar plexus with that teep. And then just poured it on. That was it. Wow. How wrong was I? Volkov looked incredible tonight. Teep straight just below the titty. And immediately keels over. Immediately is in pain. Wow. Damn, that is impressive. That shit is impressive, man. Are we are we fucking joking right now, by the way? We've had so many finishes. This main card, four fights, four finishes. Too goddamn good. Yeah, I'll turn on the video so you can hear the decision. By knockout or TKO, the official decision brought to you by Guaranteed Rate. You could save massive money on your mortgage with the incredibly low rates from Guaranteed Rate. Act now by visiting rate.com. To make this one official, here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, Lucas Pisaki has called a stop to this contest at one minute, 15 seconds of round number two. Declaring the winner by TKO, Alexander Drago Volkov. All right, a big win for Drago, Alexander Volkov tonight. Congratulations. I know you've got a lot of respect for your opponent, Walt Harris, but congrats on a huge win tonight, man. How do you feel about your performance? Thank you so much. I'm feeling really good. Uh, I'm feeling great, like I'm uh, going back to the win streak, and um, I'm ready for the new challenge. What were your thoughts on this matchup coming in against Walt Harris tonight? Uh, it was a good fight uh, for both of us. We uh, both have uh, last loss, but... Uh, with a good ranking opponent, so uh, now for me uh, it means that I'm uh, staying here in top 10 uh, uh, for a long time and I will go to the belt. We're going to take a look at the finish. It seemed like you were reading things beautifully on offense really and on stuff. defense. Really Did you stuff. feel like the body shot might be open for you tonight? Um, I work on it. I work on it, I, and also I work on body shot, and then uh, to punch it with my arms. What was in first round, I I, I make uh, uh, my body shot and my arms, and in uh, this round I, I make uh, I, I I do super opposite side. So uh, sorry for my English as well. I am trying my best, and I want to uh, say thank you to uh, my family, to my wife especially. He really helped me with this, and for my team that uh, uh, every time with me is the best team uh, in the world. So I will go to the uh, belt. <laughs> Number seven in the world coming in. Before I let you go, any name as to who you'd like to fight next? Um, any challenge, any uh, guy oh, with the big names. Uh, 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 Dos Santos, uh, and uh, and the Rosen Struck. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, Rosen Struck. Over <laughs> Sorry. Good fight, good fight. Uh, anybody who, who can take me back to the uh, belt run, I, I'm ready for the fight. Congrats on a big effort tonight. Safe travels home and happy birthday. That's right. The Russian 32 today, Alexander Volkov. I mean, what a performance Very by nice. Alexander well Volkov done. on well his done, birthday in great attempt. Impressive. Now it's time for the shit that matters. Can it near? Just, just stabbed him. Oh man, he groaned immediately. That was bad. That was bad. Okay. Now, time for the Whitaker vs. Cannoneer. Thoughts on this going in ugh, is that uh, Cannoneer, good, good, good. Uh, Tate on defense makes guys punish, punishes guys for shooting on him. Uh, uh, if you think about David Branch or uh, Jack Manson, uh, they got fucked up. 
because I tried to shoot on him and he was he just started to say no. Um, Jan Blachowicz had him down because he wasn't liking what he was feeling on the feet. I think Whitaker, who I think qualified, I want to say, for the uh, Commonwealth or the Oceania Champs in, in wrestling, he needs to incorporate the wrestling into into his game. I don't th- I don't think he would be able to take down Jared Kennedy. Um, I don't think if he did take him down, I think he'd be able to hold him down. But he should incorporate it into his game to at least keep Jared Kennedy thinking. Cause J- the, the, my, the thing that I'm worried about in this fight, because I'm, I'm, I'm Whitaker man, I'm Whitaker man. The thing I'm worried about is uh, Whitaker's chin after the Romero fights. Well, because he got knocked out by Wonder Boy back in the day, and we can maybe blame that on the weight cut. But at middleweight, he looked good. He looked really good. He um, was sharp in all his fights, especially the Jacare one. The Jacare fight, I think, is one of my favorite fights, uh, especially by Whitaker. He looked unbeatable then. And then Romero just took years off his life. It was wars it was war that he had and then you saw that you saw that pay dividends in the Adesanya fight how he got dropped uh, once in the first round and then uh, finished in the second round took, took some time off and then came back and forth Darren Till and Darren Till dropped him with an elbow I think in the first round of their fight Jared Cannonier hits fucking hard I am nervous for how um, Whitaker reacts to the power of Cannonier. Now, Cannonier is not perfect. He uh, got finished by Dominic Reyes, and Whitaker is cheeky, especially that his little his uh, lead left hook. He he throws after uh, throwing kicks, mainly uh, kicks out the middle, like teep kicks or whatnot. As he lands his uh, as he lands his foot back on the ground, he kind of shoots in with a uh, left hook, and it's, it's just really nice. It's really nice. He landed on uh, Tavares, he landed on Whitaker. Ah, uh, landed on Romero, I mean. So, uh, uh, he's good. He can knock out Cannonier. But I think Whitaker has got to fight Cannonier like he fought Romero. Staying on the outside. Lots of kicks, lots of jabs. And work up to something. I don't think he's going to be able to um, blitz him. He cannot fight him like he fought. Adesanya, where he just ran in trying to take his head off. I think Cannonier will catch him and he will hurt him and he will not let him off the hook. But you, uh, back to the wrestling point, uh, you saw Whitaker in the Romero fights. His, uh, his counter wrestling, his defensive wrestling was fantastic. And then when he was hurt in the second fight, he was uh, trying to take Romero down. And you're not, you're not really going to take Romero down unless he's really tired. But the thing is, he got to a point where he was shooting on Romero. Romero was not, uh, he was not able to strike back effectively because of the takedown. He was defending the takedown primarily because he knew, well, he could feel how strong and how technical Whitaker was. So, a tough fight, tough fight for both, for both, both men. An important fight. Winner of this is going to get the Adesanya fight. Uh, I had Whitaker win the first fight uh, against Adesanya based on the fact that uh, Calvin Gaslam could hit Adesanya and I felt Whitaker was a more accurate and crisp striker than Gaslam was so if Whitaker were to win and the rematch were to happen I'm unsure now that the first fight's happened that it would be any different I think Whitaker could do better things like kicking the leg more and not rushing in as aggressively as he did but Adesanya looked too good Kananea I think gives interesting problems to Adesanya he uh, has, has good power and he's accurate and he's uh, patient but I do think Adesanya just does piece up Kananea uh, also I said it before but um, I, I have you know, five people currently listening so no one was here earlier but I'll pull up this photo again like I did before. Um, how the fuck is does Whitaker look 
bigger than um, um ooh, looks bigger than uh Canania. If I go to the UFC page, just bear with me for a moment. I'll pull up this photo so you guys can have a look. Bear with me. Okay, if I just change this over really quickly. Yeah, okay. Look at this. How does Whitaker not only look taller, but broader and and like has more a stomach than Cannoneer, who used to be a goddamn heavyweight? And no one's no one's mentioning this for some reason. Cannoneer's got power and he's strong, but how the how the fuck is Whitaker so much bigger than him? I don't get it. I don't fucking get it. So, I'd actually be curious to see how uh, the grappling exchanges, including um, including um, the clinches, as we, I think Whitaker would, would get the clinches quite frequently. I want to see how their size and strength plays into it. Because Herman Manson couldn't do anything. Uh, Dara Branch couldn't do anything. And they're known as wrestlers. So that that's my thoughts. That's my thoughts. I want to. I'm going to say. Um, I'm going to say Whitaker by second round TKO because we're in a trend of everyone's getting finished tonight. So I'm going to say we'll get the finishes coming. And I'll say second round TKO for Whitaker. If you're in the chat. Feel free to write something and let me know what you think because I want to know. I want to know. I want to know what you guys think. Also, he was close to finishing um, Romero. No one's close to finishing Romero. In the first fight, that is, at least, in the fifth round. This, to be fair, should be five rounds. But, yeah. But, um, no, he, looked, he looked good against Darren Till. Just watched the um the promos going on currently, and Kennedy is fucking sparring with sunglasses on. Or her hidden pads or sunglasses on. I don't think Whitaker will shoot on him when um when um Kennedy hits him because Kennedy will hit fucking hard and Whitaker will be like right fuck this and I'll take you down. But if the Whitaker the for Jacques Ray turns up, my money's on Whitaker. Don't want to raise fuck tomorrow though. Don't want to raise. But don't want to raise it's huge. Uh, oh, oh, Whitaker's a lad. You can't hate Whitaker. He's just a lad. I'd hate to see him lose as well. Just because he's such a nice guy. It's just so nice to everyone. I hate to see him lose. So, but also, oh, it wasn't his last fight. It was uh, Kennedy's fight against Branch, I believe. How fucking cool was it when he, he was like waiting to walk out, and that kid was just in the audience, like next to him, just like hyping him up. Just in there, like, man, you're the best. No one can stop you when you put your mind to it. No one can ever stop you. You can be the champ. You can be everyone in the world. You can be Romero. You can be Jackery. You can be anyone in the world. And and Kennedy was like. Fuck yeah, I can. And I gave him a shirt that was dope. So, Kennedy, also a lad. Also, he went to, he went to Northern Europe to fight Hermanson and then went to Brazil to fight Anderson Silva. So, no, nah, he's cool. Kennedy, cool. Where'd he go? Cool. I want both of them to win. Oh, Benzie Henderson in the corner. Absolute lad as well. Benzie Henderson's my first ever favourite fighter, so fuck yeah. I'm curious to see how they look against each other squared up. Oh, did he lose the glove to Shearer? No, he didn't. It did. 
Where's this man? Oh shit, he did too. Oh my god. Round three. What the fuck? So yeah. He got knocked out by Sean Jordan, I think his name is. I can't remember his name. He knocked out Cyril Asker. It's nothing to be proud of. Beat Kujalaba, which was impressive. He was like walking him down at the end. Shera got decision there. Knocked out, I don't know who that is, Rohirik, lost to Blahovic, lost to Reyes, beat Branch, beat Silva, beat Hermanson. Nah, my boy Whitaker, I'm here for my boy Whitaker. Nervous now. I'm nervous now. Alright, what it is walking in now. Looks big, looks in shape, looks like he normally does. You ready? You cheeky bitch. You're cannon here. Alright then, sunshine. If uh, if Cannon Neal wins, um, I'll buy you dinner tonight. And if uh, Whitaker wins, you can buy me dinner tonight. Uh, Joe Cannon Neal, massive reach. Didn't realise that. But see that, look at that Whitaker, taller man. For someone coming from welterweight when Joe Cannon came from heavyweight. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah, turn on the audio so you can hear Bruce be a Bruce Buffer say his shit. Three rounds in the UFC middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a mixed martial artist holding a professional record. 13 wins, four losses. He stands five feet, 11 inches tall, weighing in at 185 pounds. Fighting out of Glendale, Arizona, USA, presenting the number two ranked middleweight contender in the world. Jared, the killer, Gorilla, Cannoneer. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, a mixed martial artist holding professional record, 22 wins, five losses. He stands six feet tall, weighing in at 186 pounds, fighting out of Sydney, Australia, presenting the former UFC middleweight champion and the number one ranked middleweight contender in the world, Robert the Reaper Whitaker! Well, right, when the action we go. Alright, let's see how big Whitaker looks standing next to him. Alright, touch of gloves, round one, just started, 457, 456, 55. Whitaker, we're in the back foot. It's a hard low kick from Cannonier. Cannonier's legs look huge. Whitaker bouncing like he normally does. High guard from Cannonier. Whitaker, uh, orthodox. Cannonier switching. Was setting south forward, now an orthodox. Jab from Whitaker. Circling around each other now. Cannonier starting to push him back a little bit. Jab again from, from Whitaker. Lands clean. Fainting in for Whitaker. Inside, uh, inside low kick lands for Whitaker. Inside low kick again. Powerful, powerful kick from Cannonier. Trips Whitaker. Whitaker gets back up. Cannonier throws a high kick and falls. Whitaker in on him again. 
already some redness around the behind the knee of uh, Whitaker's lead leg. Throws a high kick blocked from Cannonier. Ducks in. Whitaker does to throw, throw a lead hook. Doesn't commit to it. Jenny Cannonier is out of the way. Jab again, Whitaker. Front teep. Cannonier doesn't land. Head kick again. Just misses. Blocked from Cannonier. Jab again from Whitaker. Straight. Head kick again. Just out of range. Whitaker is. Cannonier walking them down though. Lead kick again. Trading kicks and again. Whitaker's lead leg buckling in on every one of these shots that Cannonier lands. Already some redness around there. Oh, switch kick for Cannonier. Just misses. First time I've ever seen him do a jump kick. Lead kick. Ah, oh, that, that, that lead kick from Cannonier is sharp and sparkling Whitaker every single time he lands it. Whitaker needs to do something about it. Oh, throws a head kick. Nearly lands. Oh, straight, straight from Cannonier, rocks him, stumbles backwards, looks alright though, wits are about him, but did look a little bit rocked on the feet there for a moment, head kick again, eats it clean, Cannonier looking like Whitaker might have his number, eats it inside low kick, Cannonier does, jab again, Whitaker's finding his range, finding his momentum, every time, every time Cannonier plants his feet, looking to strike, um, Rob Whitaker is in there, pumping that jab, pumping that leg kick, he's not giving the chance to rest on his feet, 1-2 from Whitaker, looks sharp. Tape, Cannonier, nothing on it. Powerful leg again, but it eats two jams for it. Whitaker looks sharp so far. Eyes are wide. Faints a head kick. Cannonier sees it though. Jab again. Cannonier overreacts for a try check hook him. Back into all, uh, South Ball stance. One, two, if Whitaker ends it with the left hook, nearly lands. Excuse me. Jab again lands, Whitaker. Leg kick, Cannonier lands, buckles at Whitaker's leg in again though. Jab, power jab again, get that lunge jab in there you like so much, because it's so easy to get the um, straight off it as well. Good jab again. So see what, why you look like this? out of sign, yeah, he should be. Jab again, jab against land, jab's money. Pop with the Cannonier, right on the nose. Cannonier walking forward again though. No longer stationary like I was earlier. Not landing enough though. Oh, straight from him. All oh, tries to slip and counter, and again, just misses Robert Whitaker though. Oh, eats that leg kick Whitaker does, but once again, buckles his knee in. Oh, um, Whitaker dives in with a jab, but Kennedy counters over top. Kennedy is having more success, uh, success when he's staying in Orthodox stance and buckling his leg in with the um, the outside leg kick. Ducks under Whitaker's lead hook. Back to Southpaw. Whitaker plants that straight, doesn't nothing on it. Jab again from Whitaker. And again from Whitaker, Kennedy tries to counter over top with that lead hook. Oh, head kick again, just misses from Whitaker. Nicks him in the guard. The jab, he steps outside of um, Cannonier's lead leg and throws a head kick very close. Body body kick from Cannonier, just misses. And again, that one lands though. Body straight from Whitaker, looks good. Body uh, teep from Cannonier in the round one. Beautiful round. <sighs> Give it to Whitaker. Tough round though. Both having their moments, both having good shots. Uh, roll up Whitaker's lead leg. Uh, looking buckled, and uh, he ate some a few good body shots there in that round. Tough round. <sighs> Looking at the highlights. Oh, first leg kick by Canada didn't actually hurt him that much, it just caught him as he was stepping down. Other ones though, every time they landed, they were bucking his leg across him, making his legs cross, and he was off balance. Canada can follow up on that, it was good. Whitaker slipped Jerry Canada's 
jab and landed a straight up that uh, sent him stumbling. So then would uh, Kanemiya switch from that jab and is now throwing check hooks and having more success with it. Round two, touch of gloves. 457, 66, 55. Okay, same start again with a good bouncing. Jerry Kanemiya kind of trying to come forward. Eats it. Throws a lead leg kick again, and once again buckles Rob Whitaker's lead leg in. He needs to follow up on it though, he cannot be standing there throwing one at a time. Yeah, Jerry Kennedy is teasing that overhand to come over Rob Whitaker's jab. There's the, um, the uh, leg kick again. Jerry Kennedy is switching stances nicely when he's an orthodox um, in that closed guard scenario. He's throwing that leg kick and it's doing damage, but when he's standing south southbound, he's kicking uh, Rob Whitaker with that lead leg kick, seems to be doing way more damage and really putting him off balance, maybe more so of like a push or a sweep, as less of much of a smack into his leg. Body teeth for Cannonier, Rob Whitaker throws that head kick again, nothing on it. Cannonier getting confidence about him though, coming forward more with more uh, disarray for Cannonier, uh, Rob Whitaker's power. 1-2 from Whitaker though. Head kick from Cannonier just misses. Oh, uppercut from Whitaker as he grabs a collar tie. Very nice. Back to right, back to striking range now. A couple jabs from him. A couple jabs from both of them. There you go. Kennedy switches back to um, yep, switches back to southpaw and uh, uh, sorry, uh, southpaw and immediately lead lead kicks Rob Whitaker's lead leg and immediately puts him off balance. Straight from what it would have could have switched straight again. That one lands. This comes inside Kennedy's jab. When Kennedy is throwing the jab, it's uh it's uh Rob Whitaker's coming around it too nicely. Kennedy is having more success with those hooks with a check hook like he just did right then. Whitaker threw the lead hook uh, the lead jab and uh Kennedy came around with the check hook. Very nice. But now when Whitaker's just putting him against the cage, that's when Whitaker Oh right hook from Kennedy just clips Whitaker behind the ear. Whitaker looks alright though. And he throws a teep kick while Rob Whitaker pulls back his lead leg in fear of the lead kick. There it is, there's a lead, lead kick again. A little bit softer from Kennedy this time here. So just back to orthodox. Straight, oh, trading punches they are. Whitaker with the straight, Kennedy with the, with the check uh, right hook. Oh, Kennedy's eye is swelling up. His right eye is very swollen. Jab again from Whitaker, right on the chin. And again, yeah, straight right from his money as well. Body kick from Kennedy looks good. That eye is not looking like it's having fun. Oh, body straight from Kennedy look nice. What if he left with his hands low and paid for it? That eye is almost swollen shut. Kennedy holding his uh, right hand quite high. Standing orthodox though. Good jab from Whitaker. Kennedy swings over the top but misses completely. Oh, powerful leg kick again. Oh, he threw that one there, but he was too far out of range. He might be losing his um, depth perception from that swollen eye. One minute left. One ten. Straight right, then Ruidica beautifully mixes in the wrestling, takes him down against the fence. Nice wee outside trip, has his back control at the moment. Oh, head kick on the break, just misses Cannonier. Beautiful mixing in from old Rob Whitaker. Just like I said. Good jab again, but once again, eats that leg kick and buckles his leg in. And again, Whitaker needs to get, oh, right hand just misses Whitaker there. Stumbles back though, don't know how clean that landed. Good jab again, and jab again, Whitaker's jab is money, but he's eating that leg kick and not giving anything back from it. Oh, one two from Whitaker. Jenny here snaps his head back. Why have I not put this in full screen yet? Straight from Whitaker. 
fainting his hips. Ten seconds left. One to one, two again. Lands all of them. Oh, front snap kick from Jenny Kennedy just misses his head. Round two, beautiful round two. I would say two up to Whitaker. Kennedy's eye looks okay. Doesn't look too bad. Whitaker almost says up two, but it's hard to tell. Kennedy could have won that first round. I think Whitaker won with a takedown though. Beautiful takedown. Grabs a boy lock, hits an outside trip. All against the fence. Whitaker, um, Kennedy back to his feet immediately, but still uh, very, very good timing and a, a nice way to mix up his striking. Besides that, his jab looking fantastic, doubling it up, looking good. Every time Kennedy is throwing a jab, Whitaker is counting it perfectly. It's when uh, Rob Whitaker is getting lazy with the jab, Kennedy is coming over the top of it with uh, check hooks quite nicely. Lee kick is still money. I feel like he's having better success with the, uh, with the uh, outside uh, lead kick when he is standing southpaw. Uh, yes, it's really crossing Whitaker's legs over, but he is eating a lot. Uh, significant strikes around Whitaker, 25, 25 round one, 25 round two. Jerry Kennedy, 16 strikes round one, 16 strikes round two. Right, start of round three. Now glove touch. One two again from what it kill looks very nice round three. Uh, 450, 449, 448, 447. Jab again is money that eye seems to be bothering him. Uh Kananir in the orthodox stance. So not as easy for him to slip and do that check hook the way he likes that front snap kick from what it is head. Kananir is head out of the way. Lead kick doesn't land though from uh Kananir. Oh, powerful jab again, really snapping with uh, uh, Kennedy's head back now. Yep. Kennedy is hopping around, hopping around. Oh, beautiful one, two, three, head kick. Kennedy's hurt, Kennedy's hurt. He's falling over, he's stumbling over. Rob Whittaker's all over him. He's flat, face down, face down. Rob Whittaker's pouring it on here, non-stop. He's, he's sucking between the guard of Jerry Kennedy. He's putting it on now. Elbows for full guard. If I was Rob Whittaker, get the fuck out of there now. In the full guard of Jerry Cannonier, Rob Whitaker is trying to pass, trying to sneak over the legs, but I uh, got caught uh, back in full guard. Low full guard though, his legs are wrapped around Whitaker's uh, legs, he's trying to grapevine the legs. Rob Whitaker steps over to half guard now, open half guard. Cannonier is uh, not locked his feet around in any way, shape or form. He's stuck against the fence though, he cannot help out. Rob Whitaker is holding the half guard, putting shorter pressure onto his head now. The the guard of Cannonier is oh, is is free to step over if Rob Whitaker wants to. Go for a head numb, he's on the wrong side, the fence is going to stop him getting over, the, getting over to that side that he wants. Kennedy looks like he has recovered a little bit though, but is stuck underneath. Uh, he's now locked in the half guard of uh, Rob Whitaker. Rob Whitaker steps over the mount, but loses it, and now he's in the half guard on the other side. <gasps> Kennedy are bleeding now out of that eye. Rob, uh, Whitaker steps all the way over to mount, in mount now, has not great behind the legs, just in there now. Kennedy is just holding onto the head for now. Strong position now for Rob Whitaker. Rob, Kennedy gives his back. Can, Rob Whitaker stays on it. One hook in, both hooks in, and has the arm trapped. No, loses the arm, but feet, both hooks are in, and uh, he has uh, Kennedy's back. Bleeding Kennedy is out of the eye. That swollen part has it looked like it has burst. There's a Kennedy gets out, Rob Whittaker stands up, in the clinch, standing on their feet, Rob Whittaker should disengage now. Kennedy turns it around, Rob Whittaker's got back to the fence, Kennedy is holding him against the fence now. Not, not a strong clinch, he's now just leaning into him. Good head position though, uh, good knee, that almost looks like with the groin. Um, Rob Whittaker is reaching over the head of Kennedy and uh, is controlling one tricep. Kennedy was on such wobbly legs. Oh, powerful body body knee from um, Kananir there. Rob Whitaker needs to get off the fence now. There is space now. They have, they have space. They are back in the centre of the cage now. Kananir's eye looks terrible. It is bleeding. Rob Whitaker looks sharp. Don't know how strong Kananir's legs are underneath him. Throws a switch head kick. Doesn't quite land though. Whitaker looks sharp. Jab is pumping out. 
125 left to go in round three. Whitaker shaking out his arms. Hasn't thrown anything. Yes, yet. Throws a jab and hints at the head kick and Canada gets all the way out of the way. Very, very good fight. Very good last round. Jab is money. Canada heavily overreacts to the jab. Leg kick from Cannonier, nothing on it. Cannonier looks like the gas is out of him. Jab again on the chin, lands money. 50 seconds left to go. Cannonier needs something big to win this round or to win this fight. Body kick from him. Cannonier, uh, Jared, uh, Whitaker blocks it. Whitaker cruising, jab, money. Oh, when uh, Cannonier was on one leg, knocks him back. But Cannonier coming forward now. Oh, oh, jab from Cannonier, rocks on Whitaker. On the fence. Kennedy's pouring it on now. Rob Whitaker had wobbly legs underneath him. It could go any way now. 25 seconds left to go. Both throwing. Both throwing. Rob Whitaker, Whitaker shoots a takedown. Lovely. He's all the way to the clinch. Beautiful time on that takedown. Has him against the clinch now. Has a deep over uh, under hook and is stomping on the leg now. Beautiful time from Rob Whitaker. Oh, knee from Kennedy. Just misses. Falls over. Gets back up though. 10 seconds left. Whitaker has him against the fence. Holding him on there. Shoots down for the double leg. That is time round three. What a beautiful fight. Beautiful, beautiful fight. What a third round. Both fighters were hurt. Cannonier was about to go to sleep. And then the last 30 seconds seems to land that beautiful check hook that he was landing throughout the fight. And uh, Rob Whitaker's leg stumbled underneath him. Beautiful, beautiful round. Let's see the replay and uh, see what strikes hurt Cannonier and what one hurt Whitaker with more accuracy. Either way, no no one looked bad. Both eyes looked good. Oh, it was a jab straight to a high kick. Lands perfectly flush on what on uh, Joe Cannonier's head, and he is he is on queer street. His legs are not under him. He runs face first in the ground. Beautiful, and then oh, beautiful corkscrew uppercut lands on Cannonier as well. Seeing him stumbling back as well, and then jab, it was a jab. It was a jab from Cannonier as Whitaker jabs. And Kennedy's good job goes over Whitaker's and just clips him on the chin. And uh, Whitaker on wobbly legs recovers quickly though. And as soon as Kennedy comes in range again, um, Joe Kennedy uh, 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 Joe Kennedy comes in range. Whitaker shoots that takedown and uh, doesn't get the takedown, but brings it to a clinch and lets him coast out the last uh, 20 seconds in safety. Nearly eats a knee though in the clinch. Oh. Drama, carnage, anything, everything you hope for in a co-main event. I'm going to say Whitaker probably won all three rounds. But uh, Cannonier has a, a huge future ahead of him. Uh, this will not be the last few of him. That is a horrendous cut, though, that is on his eye. So it swelled up underneath his eye and then at some point just uh, blew up and uh, is a massive cut. I will turn on the audio for Bruce Buffer now. Here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. All three judges score this contest, 29-28, for the winner, by unanimous decision, Robert the Reaper Whitaker. Fucking hard fight, man. You made it really damn hard. hard fight. Fight. Very hard good fight. job, brother. Thank you. Yeah. What a fight and what a moment between two of the best middleweights in the world and still the number one contender, the former undisputed middleweight champion. Fight Island has been good to you. Congratulations on an epic performance tonight. I know you're just digesting this, but how do you feel? Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm very happy it's all over. Obviously, we got the result we wanted. Uh, extra happy, but... Work's done, baby, I'm coming home. Work's done, and you got the W. You're 10 and 1 at 185 pounds. I know when we sat down with you on Wednesday, you spoke about his resilience, and man, head kick probably would have felled lesser fighters. Did you think you were close to getting him out of there? I was hoping. <laughs> you never really know. He's tough, he's resilient. I, I thought I had him gone, he stayed in, then he got back up, and then he started putting it on me. I was like, ah. Oh. It was a good fight. He's a tough guy. So he got you with the right hand, and then it looked like a few seconds later you looked up at the clock, and then that level change allowed you to sort of expire the time. And uh, overall thoughts on just a huge win and a career full of them for you? Honestly, uh, straight off the back of last fight, me and my team diligently worked game plans with this guy. We knew he was aggressive. We knew he walked me down. We knew he was resilient. Had to be in there. Had this not from the outside. Followed it to a T. Got a very classy win. 
Happy to go home. Before I let you go, because of injuries, you were limited to one fight in 2018, one in 2019. Now you have two wins over credentialed contenders inside of three months. You're already the guy with the number one next to your name. Talk us through what the immediate future holds for the former champ. Uh, I'm going straight home and putting up my Christmas tree. Promise the kids, everyone's stoked. That's what's happening. I kind of figured as much. I know you have another baby on the way in January. All class, one of the best middleweights in the world. The former champ getting it done tonight. The Reaper, Robert Whitaker. That post fight interview was. What a lovely man he is. What's in the immediate future? I'm going to put up a Christmas tree. What a top, top lad. Top lad. Okay, I'll be back in a second. I'm just going to go take a leak. Oh, excuse me. Yes, we uh we better talk about the main event again. Um, so personally, I think the main event, what it comes down to, is who has their back against the fence. Now we know, we all know that Khabib is an amazing wrestler. We all know that. But we also know that his main stick wrestling offensive game is when your back, or the opponent's back, is against the cage. Um, you've seen him have significantly less success when he's shooting uh, from the cage to the centre of the octagon. The uh, first takedown in the Conor McGregor fight, Conor McGregor defended it beautifully. Eventually, Khabib got it, but the fact that it took him as long as it as it did to get him down uh, showed the uh, showed that. And in the third round, I don't think he was, he might have taken Conor McGregor down in the last like few like thirty seconds or so. But in the third uh, round, McGregor was pushing uh, Khabib back to the fence. And Khabib was shooting in from there, trying to take him down. And Conor McGregor was pulling up to a clinch and disengaging. That is where Khabib's game plan falls in, is from there. Gaethje is... Let me just close the window real quick, because there's a baby crying outside. Super annoying. Um, Justin Gagey, pressure fighter, amazing pressure fighter. His first uh, three fights in the octagon, he was all about just the carnage and the war. And he, he did well against Michael Johnson, made him tired, leg kicked him, and then uh, and uh, put him out of the air late in the second round. Eddie Alvarez and Dustin Poirier weathered that storm, and uh, they managed to TKO him late in their fights. So from that, he came back and change he didn't change his whole fighting style he just tweaked a few things and became way less 
a forward motion and was happy to sit back and not counter strike but just uh, allow more uh, more exchanges to happen in neutral ground rather than rushing into it. So you saw in the in the Vic fight he was um, pushing forward more controlled and then we got to the cage he landed the big one too and put him out. He was happy trading lead kicks with Edson Barboza in the centre of the cage and eventually got the better of it and forced Edson Barboza back to the fence and Edson Barboza notoriously known for not liking pressure. Once on the fence he, he knocked him out almost immediately but the point it was showing that he was happy to, to hang back and trade a little bit as opposed to just rushing in and just getting clipped. Uh, same with Cowboy Cerrone, he, he countered Cowboy. Cowboy notorious for uh, also hating pressure fighters. But he, um, Gagey sat back and um, clipped him coming in. And then the same thing happened to get with Tony Ferguson. Tony Ferguson uh, loves pressure, he loves forcing the pressure. And, and Gagey's style in that fight allowed him to counter Tony every time he came in. So for this, he needs to find a way to pressure Khabib towards the cage without rushing in. He rushes in, Khabib's going to take him down immediately. If he can stand his ground and counter Khabib when he's coming in, but still, well, once the counter's finished, force him backwards, he'll have significantly more success. One thing we saw in the Khabib fight when he first does in Poirier is I think in the second round, only second round, Khabib had confidence coming in and and doesn't pull you through an overhand right and clipped Khabib with it. I don't think Khabib was especially hurt, but as soon as Dustin Poirier threw that punch, he, he noticed it and uh, came forward, and Khabib looked panicked, going backwards under the pressure. He looked like he was, uh, he was a fish out of water until, excuse me, Dustin Poirier uh, ran out of punches, and immediately Khabib circled him onto the cage and took him down. Justin Gagey needs to find the measured chaos. He needs to walk him forward without rushing. Because I, I don't know how much success Khabib will have shooting from the cage coming to the center of the octagon. However, Dustin Poirier and Eddie Alvarez both made Justin Gagey work uh, from a takedown attempt. They didn't hold him down, but they uh, shot on him in a way that made him... I think that's important. They may have just like knee-tapped him, I think. But both times, uh, Gagey got up and was... It wasn't a technical get-up. He exploded up to his feet. Yeah, so I'm watching the highlights now prior to the uh, main event, and all of Khabib's successful takedowns are against the cage. Khabib's whole game is take down on the cage, you climb up on the cage, and he'll just take you down on the cage again. We all, we all know. We all know what needs to happen. Everyone talks about it. Everyone talks about the same exact thing. You've heard what I've said a million times before as well. If Gagey can keep it on the feet, he will probably win. How Gagey's going to keep it on the feet is with measured pressure. He's a time the counters, and when he lands them, he needs to circle and put Khabib against the cage. And that's all it is. Simple as that. Simple as that. So, I have... I think I've got, I think I've got money on Gaethje for this one, actually. Let me just have a quick look at my book. I did put money on Gaethje in this one. So, I hope it wins. I think win or lose, the next fight to make is probably Tony versus um, Khabib. If if you can if you can give um, Jose Aldo uh, a title shot off a loss, if you can give um, uh, Alexander Gustafsson a title shot off a loss, if you can give Daniel Cormier a title shot off a loss, you can give Tony Ferguson a title shot off a loss. So I think the thing the fight that he could have with Dustin Poirier would be fun. The only other fight option would be. Tony Ferguson with Conor McGregor, but just give Conor, give Tony Ferguson a title shot no matter what. This is the other, only other fight that makes sense for Khabib after this, even if Khabib loses, just give him, uh, if Khabib loses, still give Tony Khabib, but that's the fight everyone wants to see. 
it's funny watching watching the promo they've got going for the Gaethje, um Khabib fight. All of their success is against the cage. Khabib's grappling is successful in the cage, and Justin Gaethje's striking is successful on the cage. That is it. That is the fight. Whoever has got their back on the cage is going to lose. Mark my words. Also, no one seems to leak at Khabib, obviously. So, Justin Gaethje should do a little bit of that. Once he gets him against the cage, though. Get him to cover up high, and then leg kick. And don't be fucking dumb like Michael Johnson and doesn't pull you and pull guillotines. You don't have a fucking guillotine, Khabib. Yeah, I'll put the audio on so you can hear their walkouts, eh? He is leaner, he is stronger, he is more focused than ever before. He is the UFC's interim lightweight champion, Justin Gaethje. He tosses that belt off to the side tonight in pursuit of undisputed greatness. DC, Tony Ferguson was the first man in the illustrious history of the UFC lightweight division to put a double-digit winning streak on paper. Justin Gaethje put an emphatic end to that, and in so doing, proved to himself that he could excel in a long-distance fight in the finish in round five. Tonight, the challenge steps up another one. Yeah, he battered and bruised Tony Ferguson. This fight was never close. He outclassed him. Now, when I look at Justin Gaethje, the thing that stands out to me is that unwavering self-confidence, that belief that he is here today for one reason, one reason only, to beat Habib Nurmagomedov. These guys are prepared, and if he watches some of Habib's other performances. Now, Habib has dominated, but in the ally quit the fight, he was able to get back to his feet and spend a lot of time standing. Justin Gaethje is able to do that tonight. It will be very difficult fight for Habib Nurmagomedov. You've heard a lot of words out of Gaethje on this recent run, like selective engagement, staying calm in the chaos, even though he thrives in it. But the conditioning really allows him to set a pace and keep a pace that few can keep up with. And big picture in terms of this guy's legacy, a lot of it's about this one-two punch with Trevor Whitman, how coachable he is. But from 20 and 0 to 20 and 2, not wholesale changes, but he made a few adjustments, tightened some things up, and now he has the opportunity he's been waiting his whole career for. He can finally walk out here tonight, and no one can tell him he's not the number one worry of 2012. Here is the undisputed UFC lightweight champion, internationally recognized Sambo Master. Kind of coasting pace for the rest of it, and now my stream's frozen. Again, because everyone and their mum is watching this. I want my little drink of whiskey before we begin. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, sorry, I turned this thing on. We'll talk a lot about his top game, the suffocation, the body manipulation when it comes to wrist controls and things like that, the Dagestani handcuff and everything else. But when you talk to elite lightweights like Dustin Poirier and everybody else, they say this guy feels like a light heavyweight. And I know you can speak acutely to that. He feels like he should be competing four divisions up. Yeah, he's so strong, man. He's so strong and not only strong, he's able to manipulate positions like no one can really do. He gets you on your back. You feel like you're trapped in mud. You can't move. Habib controls guys in a way that I've never seen before. And when he got to the gym, everybody was excited about this new young guy. But I'm telling you, man, he has exceeded all expectations. And tonight he enters the octagon. 
representing his father and his family and trying to keep that lightweight championship. And his late father, Abdulmanap Nurmagomedov, deserves a lot of credit for turning his son into one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world. And Khabib has embraced some of that emotion here during the week. He's ingested a lot of the content that has been out there. But you know him. He's nothing if not matter-of-fact. He says, there's nothing I can do to bring my father back. I'll compete in his honor here tonight. But he he's able to keep the focus in the right place. And uh, we'll see how it goes as he welcomes the challenge of the interim champion, Justin Gaethje. All right, the tail of the tape for this epic championship main event is sponsored by Howler Head. Khabib Nurmagomedov is 32. Justin Gaethje, 31 years of age. Gaethje, the taller man by an inch. Both fighters coming in right at the 155-pound championship limit. Both fighters with an identical reach of 70 inches. With all of that, to get you ready for the main event, we turn it over to Bruce Buffer. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Our three judges scoring this contest at Octagon side are Ben Cartledge, Derek Cleary, and Sal Diamato. When the action begins, our referee in charge of the Octagon, Jason Herzog. This championship bout is sponsored by P3, the official protein snack of the UFC. And Call of Duty, Black Ops, Cold War. Unravel a conspiracy decades in the making. Available November November 13th. And now, for those in attendance and UFC fans watching around the world, this is the moment you've truly all been waiting for. Live from UFC Fight Island in Abu Dhabi. Five rounds for the undisputed UFC lightweight championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a mixed martial artist holding a professional record. 22 wins, two losses. He stands five feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds. Fighting out of Denver, Colorado, by way of Safford, Arizona, USA, presenting the interim UFC lightweight champion, the challenger, Justin, the highlights, Gaethje! And now introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner, an undefeated mixed martial artist, holding a perfect professional record. 28 wins, no losses. He stands five feet 10 inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds. Fighting out of Dagestan, Russia, presenting the reigning, defending UFC lightweight champion of the world, Khabib, the eagle, Nurmagomedov. Right. This is it. This is it. Okay. Okay, I'll be in the first round. Cool, calm, and collective. Khabib looks big. Justin Gaethje looks cool, calm, and collected, and big. Oh, it's the first round. 4.56, 4 4.54, 4 okay. Khabib circling around the outside of the cage. Justin Gaethje holding the center of the octagon. Khabib, um, Gaethje stepping back every time Khabib moves in. Worried about that shot, understandably. Good inside low kick from um, JG off the bat. No strikes thrown from Khabib yet. His eyes are on Gaethje, nice and uh, he's fainting, making Gaethje move. Lots of fainting.
stage, it looks like he's fainting for the takedown to make a boop think. Stance is low. Faints. Goes throw a leg kick, doesn't commit to it though. Spins a little bit out of control. Khabib now holds the center of the cage. Gaethje circling the outside. Both standing orthodox. That powerful inside low kick again. Oh, overhand right for Justin Gaethje. Lands perfectly on Khabib. Khabib looking for the shot now. He's coming a bit more aggressive now. Hands are low for Gaethje. Obviously ready for the shot. But was ready for that overhand right. Khabib pushing him further back towards the cage now. Justin Gaethje centers down and flinches back in to make Khabib with... Oh... Khabib going, went for the clinch, but was unable to get it. Uh, Gaethje throws back, and then Khabib right back on him, ready to push him back to the cage. Powerful leg kick from Gaethje. One, two from Khabib, nowhere near. Oh, throws the leg kick, and uh, Khabib grabs it, gets the clinch, unable to finish it. Gaethje forces the clinch again and backs away. Very well done from Gaethje. Khabib rushing forward now, trying to get that clinch. Almost reckless trying to come in for that clinch. Overhand right for Gaethje. Uh, connects a little bit. Jabs for Khabib. Um, Gaethje uh, counters with overhand rights and uh, lefts and is not. Oh, powerful overhand right for Gaethje. Lands flush on Khabib's chin. Khabib doesn't even flinch. Powerful leg kick again lands for Khabib. Khabib almost rushing in now. Powerful jab, uh, not powerful jab. Lead up, Khabib throws in there. Misses. J Gaethje is uh, dropping his head and trying to throw that overhand right. Khabib coming in with a jab. Uh, one two from Khabib, unable to but fly knee doesn't quite land. Khabib uh, Gaethje puts his hands in front of the way. Jabs for Khabib though, a powerful leg kick again for for Gaethje. Khabib is coming forward, making Gaethje work. One two again from Khabib. Head kick from Gaethje doesn't land. Gaethje against the cage now. Khabib still rushing in. There you go, Gaethje back to the center of the cage now. Khabib still coming forward. Leg low leg kick again for Gaethje. One, two again for Khabib, lands. Uh, snap body kick, flying knee, misses. Gaethje spins out of the way. Body jab for Khabib. Slap and lead hook for Gaethje, doesn't land. Two flush body, uh, snap body kick for Khabib. Double jabs for Khabib. Jab return for from Gaethje. Lead kick. For Gaethje, nice. One, two again. Throwing in the jabs, looping left hooks. Oh, uppercut and followed by a left hook for Gaethje. Lands perfectly on him. Khabib gra just grabs the arms and runs for, for, for a clinch. Justin managed to... Uh, Justin. Gaethje avoiding the clinch very nicely. Um, lead kick from Gaethje again. Khabib pulling the head down for a clinch. Gaethje, although not having success, looks sloppy. Oh, lead... Hook for Gaethje lands on Khabib. Another leg kick. There it is. Khabib finally shoots. Gets a takedown immediately. 30 seconds left in the round. Gaethje breathing heavily. But uh, has hold of Khabib. Sitting against the cage. Khabib wraps the legs effectively in mount. Uh, uh, Gaethje has one butterfly hook in. Khabib folds it over to a leg uh, drag position. And is holding him there. 18 seconds left. Sits directly into mount. Khabib, uh, Gaethje holds the head down. Khabib looks like he's sitting, sitting up for an arm. He is sitting up for an arm. He gets the arm. 10 seconds left. And it's like a bicep slice almost. Gaethje holding it. 5, 4. Round over. Strong round. Uh, the takedown and the submission at the end. You've got to give it to Khabib off that. Gaethje looked good. Looked sloppy, but landed good strikes. Trevor, Trevor Whitman saying to um, Gaethje to slow it down. He's saying more low kicks. Trevor Whitman saying more low kicks for Gaethje. The, the, the low kicks are nice from Gaethje. I like them. Khabib was getting reckless. Good jab though for Khabib. Khabib has a good jab. Looping 
lead hooks for Kibi, which I did not like. Alright. Round two. 456, 55, 54, 53. Okay. Once again, Gage is back along the fence, circling around Khabib at the centre of the cage. We know 1 2 from Khabib. We know where Gage needs to be. He's in the centre of the cage. He's the, you just can't escape the pressure from Khabib. Lead hook from K, uh, Gage lands. Powerful lead kick return from Khabib and a 1 2. A little bit of blow coming out of the nose of Gage. Front. Uh, Front snap kick to the head, almost lands for Khabib. Jabs again for Khabib. Lead hook again for Gaethje. Jabs money. Khabib kind of loosely shoots him for a, for a shot, and then Gaethje throws him off as he slips. She comes again, Gaethje just pushes him away. Powerful lead kick for Gaethje there. Powerful. Really crosses uh, Khabib's legs over one another. Inside low kick again for Khabib. Uh, for Gaethje, sorry. Outside low kick. Khabib gets the, gets the takedown. It's straight onto the back. And then to mount. Beautiful uh, grappling transition there for uh, for Khabib. Has one arm around the head. And look, he's, he's sitting for a triangle. And then there's the arm. But into a triangle. He's got the triangle. Gaethje stands up. He taps. He taps. Gaethje tapped. The ref did not see it. Gaethje went to sleep. Wow. Wow. Jason Herzog should have seen that, but did not. That was... That was, uh, that was nasty. That was nasty. That was some different grappling we've seen for some good... Khabib immediately got to mount, grab that triangle and just pull guard with it. Beautiful work. And now he's brought to tears in the centre of the cage for his father. Wow. Gaethje's there, give him a hug. Jesus. Wow. Khabib is just breaking down. Big hug from Khabib and Gaethje. Gaethje's a good sport. Powerful low kick from Gaethje that causes a double leg and Khabib just turns straight to the back. Gaethje rolls. Khabib ends up in mount. Looks like he's going for an arm triangle. Pins the arm down, the right arm down, steps over it with his leg and just sits back to like an arbor. Transitions to a triangle. Gaethje picks him up, slams him, and then taps. The arm's not even in. I'm not even across the neck. Arm's, um... He tap, taps again, taps again, taps again, taps again. Just so I didn't see it. And he went to sleep. One tap. A second tap. And he goes to sleep. Wow. Jesus. Wow. Well, I'll turn on the audio so we can hear a little announcement of that and then I'll get the heck out of here. It's in human beings that there is out there. And you just can't imagine all the pressure that he was under and everything that was going through his mind as the tributes for his late father continue to pour in quite a fighter right there. And it's just hard to think about a lightweight solving the puzzle 
That is Khabib Nurmagomedov. All right, the official decision brought to you by Guaranteed Rate. You could save massive money on your mortgage with the incredibly low rates from Guaranteed Rate. Act now by visiting rate.com. One final time tonight, here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Jason Herzog has called a stop to this contest at one minute, 34 seconds of round number two. Declaring the winner by technical submission due to a triangle choke and still undefeated and the UFC undisputed lightweight champion of the world, Khabib the Eagle Damn it. Try to get his glove off. And now, without question, the number one pound for pound fighter in the world, 29 0, Khabib Nurmagomedov. The world is in awe of your greatness once again. I will give you as much time to. Gather your emotions, but I see your corner men taking the gloves off. Your thoughts on an epic championship performance tonight. Congratulations. Alhamdulillah. First of all, I want to say Alhamdulillah. God give me everything. Thank you for these guys. These guys with me and with my father more than 20 years. All my team, AK, okay, with Coach Hav. I love him so much. All my team. Oh. Thank you. Today, I want to say, this, it was my last fight. And no way I'm going to come here without my father. It was the first time when, after what happened with my father, when UFC called me about Justin, I talked with my father, my mother, three days. She don't want to go fight without father, but I promise her it's going to be my last fight. And if I give my word, I have to follow this. It was my last fight here. I know only one thing, what I want from UFC Tuesday. You guys have to put me on number one pound for pound fighter in the world because I deserve this. And UFC undisputed, undisputed, undisputed UFC lightweight champion, 13 and all. 13 in UFC, 29 in all my pro MMA career, you know. Oh, I think I deserve it. One more thing. Uh, I want to say thank you, Lorenzo, Fertitta. Thank you, Dana, Hunter, all guys. Thank you so much. And of course, I don't forget about Joe Silva, who signed me here in UFC. Joe Silva, thank you. All this UFC team, everybody around the world, this all pandemic stuff they're doing. Great show, you know. Thank you so much, Justin. Justin, 2016, I remember when I cut weight, you helped me a lot. Thank you, brother. This is fight without cage. I know you're great, man. I know how you take care of your close people. I know a lot of things about you. Be close with your parents because one day it's going to happen something because you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. You never know. And thank you, guys. Thank you, coach. I love you so much. My teammates, Ali Abdulaziz Rizwan. Oh, alhamdulillah. Today is my last fight here in the UFC. So as you put the gloves down, you do so as the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. You go out the way you wanted to as the undisputed UFC lightweight champion. How hard was this week for you overall? It was my father, um, my father dream. What else? Dustin and Connor are gonna fight January. I choke him out, both of them. I'm not interested for this. I'm not interested for this. <sighs> one more thing. And for my players, I say to all the players, it won't be right with Russia. I just say to all the Russian speakers, thank you very much. In 2008, when I started this, and when in 2012, I first fought and signed the UFC, many of them didn't believe it. Many of them it was impossible. Я простой парнишка из обычного горного села Дагестана. Приехал сюда. Вот вчера мне брат даже говорит, Google сказал, говорит, что ты самый обсуждаемый человек на планете. Я просто не мог в это поверить. Почему? Потому что 
Просто вы сами представляете, да? У меня даже в голове этого всего не было. Я просто хотел вместе с отцом мы шли. Просто хотел стать чемпионом. У меня даже в мыслях не было, что вот так все может на мои плечи обрушиться. А, альхамду Если у вас есть родители, будьте рядом с ними, все. У меня один остался родитель, это моя мама. Я хотел бы побольше времени ей уделить. You have left an indelible imprint on this sport, and we congratulate you as you walk away 29-0. There's only one Khabib Nurmagomedov. We wish you a safe trip home, and uh, we look forward to your UFC Hall of Fame induction in a few years. Congratulations. Thank you so much. DC, I love you, brother. Ladies and gentlemen, the undisputed UFC lightweight champion, Khabib Nurmagomedov. And we step over here and talk to another one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world, all class for sick and around. Justin Gaethje, obviously a lot to digest, but your thoughts on the fight as long as it lasted, my man? Man, I, uh, I, felt, al I felt alive. That's why I stepped in here, man. I asked my coaches if they're ready to, to feel alive every time I step in here. And, you know, I'll, again, adrenaline, endorphins, released. It was, it's a great feeling, man, but uh, the only reason I stuck here is to give this man praises. I know he was in a bad spot, you know, whether he was or not. He did what he had to do. He took me down. He is very strong. Um, and I know he made his father so proud. Well, this division does not have a champion as Habib steps away, and there's a good chance that your next fight is going to be for a belt. As you look ahead to 2021, how soon would you like to spin this thing forward? I fight for a living. Uh, you know, getting the best thing about getting choked out is, you know, there's nothing really uh, consequential to your health, right. uh, especially long-term health. Uh, that's what I'm always looking out for. I said I have five wars left, and I haven't had one since I said that, so... Uh, I'm ready for the next one whenever. I'm ready. Uh, I'm in good shape. I don't want to go home and get too fat, so I'd say six weeks, eight weeks. All right, well, we'll let you go. Lower that handicap. You have the respect of this entire fan base. Thanks for sticking around. Any final words? Just because my swing is ugly, I will shoot a 13 handicap for all you mother what efforts that said no way. My man, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, there he is, Justin Gaethje. That post-fight interview was brought to you by EA UFC 4. Available now. Play the free trial this weekend and get Brock wow. Lesnar. Okay. Um, um, I guess thoughts on that. Um, I respect it. I respect it. No, that's all that's said. All that needs to be said is uh, Khabib is a monster. My uh, my um, beats were shit. And. Good on him. Good on him. Yeah, sad to see him go. But understand why. Good on him. Alright, I'll go here. Thanks for everyone who joined in. Um, I might do this again. I enjoyed it. I didn't enjoy waking up so early, but I enjoyed it. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye, one person currently. Bye.